On Faerun, in the foothills northwest of Thundertree, the Sunless Citadel, once a secret stronghold of the Cult of the Dragon, is now a sunken fortress overrun by goblins and beasts. It plunged into the earth when Mount Hotnau erupted and threw Neverwinter into chaos. Hello everyone, and welcome to Perilous Pursuits, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass friends sit around and play D&D. You are listening to The Adventure of the Sunless Citadel, thanks to resources provided by D&D Beyond. Warning, certain situations and language may not be suitable for younger audiences. And now, let's jump into tonight's episode of Perilous Pursuits. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll start the session just by going around and introducing each other again. I know that unless you wrote it down, it's hard to remember. So maybe write it down, because I'd have to. <laughs> um, well, Mike, who are you playing again? Puss in Boots? <laughs> Hello, I am, I am uh, Tiger in Boots. And he has an accent. I love it. I'm a black boxy. I am Arn the Artificer. You probably memorable, I think. Maybe okay. Yeah, not really. Yeah, the kobold. Yeah. Okay. Master Tinker and Professor. Master Dinkler. Mister Dinkler. No, I can. I'm a master <laughs> of multiple things. <laughs> you have to keep your options varied. Becker, remind everyone who you're playing. Oh yeah, I'm a uh, Kriv. I'm the Dragonborn Paladin. And that just leaves Dumbo. <laughs> it's quite funny because I was actually, exp I thought I was in line there explaining who I was, but I, of course, my mic was on mute. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> it, it, it shows up here that you're muted. Yeah, yeah, I was on, a, I was on my character page. So I'm Andro Sahila. I'm a Loxodon. I am big. I am stubborn. I am a cleric. <laughs> cleric of Lanaru? Uh I am a cleric of yeah. Who the hell am I of? Laru. 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 Is that a D is that a Forgotten Realms god? I believe so. L-U-R-U-E? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. She's known as the uh, Unicorn Queen, or the Divine Beast. I'm pretty sure oh. that is uh, Forgotten Realms, because I don't think Ravnica... She's kind of like a druid god. Then, yeah, it comes up as Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Ravnica she, uh, doesn't really have that at all. He didn't become a follower of LaRue until he came from Ravnica to uh, Faerun, or wherever we are. Oh, so you're, you're a planar being. I am a planar being that have has come from Ravnica. Yes, so you could be banished. I could. Uh, Gord, are we on the internet? Yes, we are. And uh, everyone, uh, all parties involved are, are, are okay with that? Everyone checked in and it's signed It's being recorded, it's not on the internet. I'm fine. I don't really care. Yeah. I haven't received the form yet. Okay. <laughs> it must be signed in blood. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're right, Anything Kinky. you say or do will be held against you uh, uh, in the court of the general populace. That's right. Your future... The court of general consensus. <laughs> <laughs> the future of your life may be determined in this game. Yes. And how people uh, represent you. Or... Your career yeah. opportunities will slip drastically after people <laughs> hear this. <laughs> you will block this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, far they may increase. You never know. And uh, to catch us up on uh, last week, um, the party um, has a. Uh, Cartographer, journaling, Cobalt, and uh, Varn's going to give us his rendition of what happened last week and what kind of kicked off this campaign. Okay. Yeah. Hello. This is going to be 
awkward for me because I'm not getting social spe uh, speeches. But character There's is. no one standing in front of you. I know. Except for me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to give you the. Probably nobody wants. Judgmental eyes right now. <laughs> On this, then. <laughs> Hello, my dear reader. This is Varn again. And as you remember, the last time I wrote just before I left on my journey across to Rill. Well, that journey had a snag or two. Uh, weeks after we left, uh, a group of bandits attacked my caravan and all the caravan itself. With all the money I was, I paid mercenaries protecting my, uh, the caravan. So, they left me for dead. Uh, two week, uh, weeks later, I traveled through the woods. I was ambushed and captured by a group of hobgoblins and ogres. Later that night, I woke in the middle of a uh, cage with a group of other uh, characters around me. And I'm picking up this because I forget your names already. Uh, uh, a t uh, tall. Loxodon character uh, with a long Andros healer, uh, a Kriv the Paladin, Dragonborn, and an Asmar sorcerer, uh, or Liv, forgot his last name, <laughs> and uh, in front of us was a group of ogres sitting around a bonfire. Eating, I don't know. We're discussing it. Sell our our goods, yes. or our 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 things. And and on the shoulder of one of the ogres was a sack filled to the brim with our supplies, our gear. And my my friend, I don't wish to interrupt your story, but we forgot about our good friend Orler Kurga. Yeah. He's an Asimar sorcerer. No, I already said that. I just forgot his last name. Hey, an elephant never forgets. I'm sure you didn't say that. <laughs> Please. I had the whole speech where I, I stated, okay, whatever. <laughs> Please continue, my friend. We'll get your trunk in a knot. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we to do? Are we going to get, uh, get out of this cage? Well, luckily for us. A week starving in the forest has had made me quite slim, so I simply squeeze out of the bars. And our Asmar friend uh, bolt a fire at the bag, burning a small hole in it. So I run up, uh, hidden in the bushes, and I tear a little bit, a uh, little bit of the uh, bag down with a, uh, my magical floating hand, and snatch away the uh, two daggers. I run back to uh, towards the cage, and we use the daggers to uh, we try to use the daggers to break a hole into the cage. But as we are doing that, uh, one of the hobgoblins hears what we're doing and comes towards us with its, uh, uh, with its spear out uh, on it and spear out, starting at us as the uh, as one of the ogres comes up and picks up the cage and. The bottom of the cage is uh, are more bars that uh, our legs fit through, and they force us to walk uh, to walk on le led by the lead ogre with the uh, sack over his shoulder. With nothing to do, uh, we continually uh, t continually take pot shots at the uh, bag, hoping to get out more gear. As I snatch up the gear and give it back, uh, bring it back to uh, companions, uh, we, uh, uh, we we are able to snatch light crossbows and we start firing uh, at the bag. And our, cler our elephant cleric friend uh, brings down holy fire from the sky, uh, destroying the bag, but also alerting the uh, hobgoblins and ogres of uh, us, our sneaky ways. Quickly, the hobgoblins and ogres uh, 
uh, run up and surround us. What are we to do? I climb out, uh, on, and climb onto the cage, taking pot shot after pot shot at the, uh, hobgoblin that, uh, that was poking, uh, parting us with a spear. And everyone else, uh, casted, uh, spells and magic towards the ogre as the ogre uh, leaned up with a great mighty blow with its giant club and uh, annihilated the uh, age that was uh, that captured us, and it sent me flying away. And over the next few seconds, our tabaxi friend climbed up onto the uh, ogre with their claws and uh, rending its flesh, and the. Uh, Ismar firing more and more bolts of fire. The cleric uh, shooting down more and more rays of, of holy holy fire. And the uh, paladin shooting again and again and again with its uh, crossbow. Uh, quite quickly, uh, the uh, ogre is uh, extremely bloody. And there was nothing much we do, as all the other uh, ogres and hobgoblins had surrounded us. And lucky enough for us, over the bushes came a group of uh, guards from a nearby settlement. And over the course of a few seconds, it annihilated the uh, ogre in front of uh, uh, the bloodied ogre. And the other creatures fled in fear. Or our, our saviors, uh, uh, told us that these creatures uh, had a strange relationship with them, as uh, they were uh, at constant uh, conflict throughout the year, except for on one day, where they would come out from their sunless citadel to sell uh, mag uh, magic fruit that would uh, heal, heal the injured and cure the sick. And we decided uh, on that night that we should first go, uh, go into the village and have a nice uh, rest in the inn. Then the next day, set out on a long trek towards a, sun a sunless citadel to annihilate the goblin threat. Once we went to the town, we had a nice rest at the inn. Uh, and the ne next beautiful morning, we set out on our travel. On the, on the first uh, day of the travel was uneventful. Nothing occurred out of the ordinary. On the second evening, at nightfall, one of our uh, group uh, saw from the shadows a uh, creature that looked like a tree moving slightly. The other person taking watch did not see uh, the creature and told the other he, uh, he might be losing his mind. Then, on the next, uh, next group on the watch, I was lucky enough to be on there and using my dark vision I was able to see the creature again and uh, through uh, my knowledge of an ancient legend, uh, I realized what this creature actually was. It was a, uh, a blight, a twig blight, uh, created when an ancient vampire died. In the morning, we decided we should not attack the, the creature, as as it could have been an ambush for us. We set, uh, set along the path uh, the next morning, secretly, uh, trying to avoid the creature. Uh, two hours later, uh, that day, we were ambushed again by by these twi uh, by the twig blights that we ignored. He quickly set out and called all, that, uh, all the twig uh, twig blights that were around us, and set out to the fin our final stretch towards the Sunless Citadel. He uh, soon went into the hole that uh, that housed the Sunless Citadel. And we found uh, an, uh, a new rope uh, pushed into the uh, side of the side of the wall, the sinkhole, set in a few days prior. Knowing that this rope was safe, we all climbed down and found old abandoned campsite. Deciding that was enough for the uh, for the day, we uh, took a rest on that spot. So that and so. Hopefully, um, you know, if you're willing, we can give us an update each week um, so that we can all stay apprised as to what happened and 
you know, be a good reminder for the characters and uh, anyone listening in that they can kind of pick up where we left off. So it's the morning. You guys are on this little ledge of this cliff um, that's leading down uh, into this chasm, this um, uh, ravine uh, that's been carved into the jungle here. And um, when you awake, um, you know, the, the sun is shining, um, the dust from the, the bottom of the chasm is drifting up into the sunlight. Um, there is a small, uh, sort of natural steps that kind of work their way down the cliffside. It's, it's only about, um, five feet wide, uh, and you can, you can make it out. It's, it's like, like stairs. It's not quite like, uh, climbing or anything. It's, it's easy enough. Um, do we have a fire going over the night? Fire because there was a campfire from the last party, right? There, yeah, so, campfire there. We, I, we, I believe you guys did have it going, and we have we watch, had, we we had had watches. For, we didn't have it like good morning, my 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 friends. I have cooked us a a, a delicacy of fried rat for breakfast. Ha- Who's up for it? <laughs> I have my own. I have my own. I'll cook it myself. I might take one of those rats. I only have the one. I have to air. <laughs> oh. I want to kill two. <laughs> yeah, I have one. I might have a couple of peanuts then. <laughs> oh, well, my rat isn't cooked yet. We can stuff the rat with peanut. Huh? Oh, peanut. Peanut flavored rats. But where do you stuff it? Well, you don't want to know. <laughs> Depends on which end you start at. Plus it's skin, so we don't have to skin it. Feel the cavities. <laughs> okay. What are you, a dentist now? <laughs> Not that cavity. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's early in the morning yet, and uh, you guys break for camp? Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm munching on my rat mm-hmm. in the morning, packing up my gear, rolling up my bedroll. At least I cut my rat, you know. I cut and, and I'm gonna look for for the rat tracks as we go down the road to see if I can see where their their uh, if their den is close to the path as we walk. Okay, roll a survival check. I will. I'm proficient in survival. Fifteen. Okay, you notice, uh, yeah, the rat tracks go up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. There's lots of rat tracks. You also notice humanoid footprints. Um, and then there's some other rat tracks that are, are of unusual size. Hmm. And these humanoid footprints, do I recognize what kind of humanoid? Large, small, general... Booted. Size, yeah. They're human size. Yeah, they're not anything. Are they wearing shoes? Yeah. Yes. So they're not like monsters, kind of thing. No, and this is like it's yeah, this is just a five foot wide path. That they look like the side of the cliff. Perhaps these were the like adventures that preceded or... us. Say again. Perhaps these are the adventures that preceded us. Well, do I make out whether these tracks have been here a long time, or are they more recent? They're pretty recent. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the the rope was fairly new, and that that was a, a rope that you assume you know came from this adventuring party that in town you had heard had gone out a couple of weeks ahead of you. So they are no more than a couple of weeks old. Oh, okay. I'm going to try and keep my eye on these tracks and try and follow them if I see any okay. kind of evidence of where they would have led us to. Okay, so you're leading the party and you're following the tracks? Yeah. I'm writing down everything he does. So for the, for the order of how we're going down the pathway here, 
we got Dagger going first. Yeah. I like to lead a, a little bit ahead, like 20 or 30 feet ahead. Okay. Sure. I'll be in third place. First uh, in front of me. Orler and uh, Andros will be in the middle. Okay. So, uh, Varn, if you're third, who's in front of you? Uh, I do not know. Uh, you're riding on the... No, I have, I have a fine walking speed. 30 feet. Not slowing down the pace. Okay, so Orlear and Andros have just fallen, and they're hanging onto the edge of this uh, pathway. Uh, Orlear and Andros, give me a strength check. Athletics? Yeah, uh... Strength athletics, yeah. Um, or sorry, Andro Andros got a seven, and Orlear got a eight. Okay, both of you, uh, you don't fall, but you're still hanging there. You can't pull yourself up. What do you do? Can we run back and grab his arm and yeah, start helping him? Arm, up? You're right there, Dagger. You're further down the path. You're you've got to come all the way back if you're going to help. But Riven Barn, you can make a strength roll to try and pull them up. It would probably be best if I didn't make strength roll. Can I just like, like uh, cheers on? Yeah, I, cheers I, on. I, I rolled a twenty-two for strength. Oh, yeah. bless you, my who, are, who are you pulling up? Um, I will pull up the elephant. Okay, and I wrap my trunk around his arm as he grabs my hand as well. Okay, so that's a success, Kriv. You pull Andros up, Varn. Varn, I'd like you to make a performance check for your uh, your your cheer. I got a six. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ah. pathetic. Your cheer. Is we all need to change dice. Yeah, it's <laughs> in a bad spot, but I'll help you. You know, like yeah, I'm strong. That's a lie. Okay. Can you make another strength roll for Orlear? I uh, will, and I'm using new dice. <laughs> and that's good because he rolled a 19 uh, plus zero is 19. Okay, he pulls himself up. That was all with me. That was me. Oh. Yeah. Nope. Wow. Well. Sure. You, sure. Yeah. you think yeah. it is? You think it was? Yes. <laughs> Kriv says. Orlear looks at you and gives you a bow. Kriv looks at both of you guys. And goes, let's 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 not try this again. Okay. Let's just stay on the stay in the middle. Right, hurry up. Okay, so you go down Please to the back landing back. and you change your pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dagger, give me another survival check. Oh. Uh, five. Yeah, everything looks the same as it was before. Ah, okay. Yeah, you're still following these paths. This, these uh, any rats? Uh, footsteps. Uh, um, you don't have a, a smell check. Sorry, you can't smell them. Oh, no. well, I can smell. <laughs> I'm good at smelling. Yeah, are you gonna give me a smell check? <laughs> yep. Okay, Andros, the the smell checker. Oh, I get I get advantage on smell, so that is. Yeah. So that's like a, an investigation or perception? Perception. Investigation. You're 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 looking for it. Okay, that's a 19. Okay, you do smell rats. Um they are gross. Like they you smell big rats. These aren't the little morsels that you had for breakfast. You smell something that is just inner sized. Oh, yeah. I think we have some big dinners down there. Yeah, and we don't need rations for a couple of days. Oh, uh, sorry, that was my car. I think uh, someone's trying to break into my trunk. Sorry about that, my window's <laughs> open. <laughs> I didn't know you were a fellow artificer. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Welcome to my world, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what are you guys going to do? You're headed further down the path? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Same order. Yeah. The, uh, the pathway gets even narrower and even steeper. 
Are you traveling as the same formation? Or are you all going to stick together? Or well, I'm 30 feet ahead of everyone. Are you going to stay stay that way, okay? Uh, yeah. yeah. Why not? Can, can I... What I want to do is I want to take the rope out of my inventory and tie it around each of our waists. So if one falls, then at least we have some resistance. Okay. You don't want me to fall. Little, little, <laughs> little uh, of truth here. If you had a rope tied around your waist and someone fell and they, and then they stopped, it would snap your spine. By the way, that's true. <laughs> but, but good. Not like not like the thing that we're playing a fantasy. Good thing yeah. in D and D is just gonna help. <laughs> gonna let him roll for the other guy. D and D physics. Yeah. What, what's the common okay. saying? It's not the. The falling that kills you, it's the sudden the stop. Sudden stop at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that rope will work for uh, you four characters in the back, but Dagger's on his own. Yeah. Okay, he's a, he's a cat. He can handle okay, it. Dagger, make your athletics or your uh, acrobatics check. If he falls, he'll fall on his feet. <laughs> there we go. Acrobatics. 2,000 feet. Uh, 23. Hmm. Okay, you make it to the bottom easily. And you're like, hey guys, watch me. And on my feet. Anyone else can make their acrobatics check. Ooh. Oh. Well, hey. nothing. I'm looking up. And you see, uh, I got a, uh, yeah, I got a six. Oh. Only weigh 31 pounds. Can I catch the bolt? Andros got 18. Okay. Crib got a nine. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot you had two characters. Uh, Orler got um, 17. Okay. And Crib got a nine. So in this case, uh, uh, Crib and Varn, they slip. Uh, can you guys both make strength checks? Uh, me and Orler? Uh, Crib and Varn. Crib got a Orler 15. And- Kriv got 15 on the strength check. Yeah. Varn? Oh, strength check? Yeah. I yeah. got I got a <laughs> negative two. <laughs> Would that be with advantage if you have a rope on you? Or does that count? I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that since Kriv what? Uh, made his check negative and, and both Andres and Erlier made theirs, that Varn is just dangling in between. So he has fallen, but he you, I mean, he weighs nothing, so you guys easily keep him we'll on just, the path with the rope. Yeah, we'll just spread out a little bit, and he automatically just raises. That's right. Yeah, he just catapults himself back up onto the path. <laughs> well, keep it taut. It doesn't matter if I try anymore. You know, you guys will save me. Thank you. Okay, you get to the bottom of the path, and the uh, the bottom of this uh, cavern or um, uh, ravine is uh, it's fairly flat. Um, it's fairly um, wide um, from one side to the other. It's probably like 120 feet, um, but it's it's made up of like bricks and rubble and sand and. Uh, it's it's rough terrain. There's uh, you know moving through this area, it's not like walking on a path. This is like walking through the beach with like uh, bricks and rocks and loose stones and stuff. Um, Remember, my friends, I smelled big rats, so be prepared. And as you say this, uh, three rats jump out. <laughs> Roll for initiative. I'm not using this dice. Ha 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 got a nine. Roll a one, so five. Ooh. Five two. You beat me, probably. Dex. Dex uh, is... Andros got eight. Okay. Uh, I gotta call it out so that I can write it down in the right order, or it's just gonna yeah, be yeah. Okay. Um, but it sounds like everybody rolled really low, so why don't we start really from low. the bottom? <laughs> um, who's got one to five? It, me. Orler got five. Oh, oh, we all have five. Uh, 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 
Uh, Dagger has five. Dagger has five, and Vern has five. Okay, so who's got the highest dexterity? I have an 18 dex. I have a 17 dex. Oh, so 16 for Orler. 16 dex for Orlier. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and Andros, you rolled a five? Uh, no, I rolled an eight. Okay, I'll give you the eight spot. I think Crib got a nine, just above that. The high roll is a nine. <laughs> okay, um, I got one more roll to make here. Wow, you guys are so lucky. Uh, <laughs> my my initiative order for the rats were two, four, and five. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you, Kriv. <laughs> so, really close to being all of sand and how we're being the rats. So, um, Kriv gets to go first. Um, I'll lay out the scene here. You're at the bottom of the stairs, and basically your party has its, uh, its back against the wall, and the rats are kind of spread out in front of you. One, two, three, kind of um, like left to right, surrounding the party against this wall. Okay. So you got Dagger on your left, because he's the first one down the stairs. Then you've got Vorn, Orlier, and Andros on your right. And you act first. The rats, they're they are all about uh, 20 feet in front of you. Who acts first? Kriv. I will uh, run up to the nearest rat with my sword and my shield drawn and attack. Okay. Roll for an attack. Uh, hit for 16. Okay. Uh, 16. I believe that hits. Let me just check this. Is that a D and D Beyond roll? That is a D D and D Beyond roll. Nice. And then, so it hits. Yeah. And then I hit uh, for seven damage. Okay. Um. Now, uh, I wanted to mention something. Uh, I think I should mention it now before we go too far. Uh, if, I know some DMs run a flanking bonus. And mm -hmm. I know we don't we don't have a map in order to kind of work that as far as the, the grid and the angles go. Um, the way I'm going to run it, at least for tonight, and I'm going to try it out, uh, is just that you get a plus one if you've got a flanking bonus. So if you can be opposite of that you know if you can maneuver yourself opposite of a of an ally you can get a plus one to your attack roll okay. if you can get more than one ally attacking the same creature i'll give you a plus two to your attack roll so if you have three three against one you everybody who's attacking that creature gets plus two but you have to be directly up opposite to get the plus one. Okay. But everyone understands sort of how I'm running the flanking? Yep. So then you can just kind of call that out and be like, okay, I want to get into flanking, and I'll say whether that's available at the time. And here, I mean, there's nothing else in the way um, short of the uh, difficult terrain right now. So, Kriv... Uh, your twenty, what well, was twenty feet? Is half that would be? Um, it would take you twice as much. Okay, we'll say the rats are a little closer because I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, have them laid out or anything. So they're just within your reach to be able to get to. So say they're fifteen feet away, so that you can reach them in one move. Okay, 
All clear? Yep. Hey, Andros, you're up you? next. Uh, so they're 15 feet away? Yeah, they're 15 feet away. Okay. Um, I'm going to guiding bolt the one in front of Kriv. Okay, so we'll say the one that Kriv is fighting, we'll call that Rat 2. Okay. Because I say he's in the center, so he's Rat 2. All right. Rat 2? Guiding bolt him. Okay, uh, I'm going to roll for that. Ooh, that's a big uh, nine. Nine! Nine! Okay, well, here's where... Oh, sorry, that's a first level spell. I don't want to do that. Can I can I retcon? Well, I'm still trying to find my rat um, stat block. That's um, bad. I, should, I, I, I thought it was a I thought it was a cantrip. I wanted to cast a cantrip actually. Can I change that to sacred flame? Yeah, yeah, you can do a cantrip. See. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna sacred flame him. Uh, that's a dexterity saving throw DC 13. Brilliant, damn it. Mike, you said you got the page number for me? No. Well, he, he, <laughs> I'm just saying it's at the back of the player's handbook. That's me the player's handbook right there. I'll, yeah. I'll get it for you. I had this all printed out, and now I can't find it, and I need it right this second. So here Giant it is. Giant right? Yeah. Giant spider, giant eagle. It's not in here. Maybe it's in a monster. Rat. Yeah, I've got rat here, but I don't have giant rat. It's probably in the monster man. That's why. Going back. Check the uh there's there's check, check the uh message, I'll send oh, you a link to it. Missing. <laughs> Sorry guys, I, I had this all prepped and uh, then when I check check it, I will get it for you. Check check messenger, I just gave a link to an online one. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to just make it up. I want it to be all fair. And, uh, there you go. Hey, rat. Yeah, I've got the link here. 12. It points. He has a monster manual. You have the monster manual? Yeah. It's 327. Yeah, I've got the stats now. I want to look at any more at it. Okay. It went quick. So the armor class is twelve. You said you rolled a nine, or you? you oh, sorry. It, it was flame. a sacred sacred flame. Yeah. I wanted to cast a cantrip. Okay. So sacred flame is a dexterity check of DC thirteen. Okay. Yeah, he passes. So half of, or no, no, no damage on a cantrip. Okay. So uh, Orlier's turn next. Okay, so he is going to, what's he going to do? Uh, firebolt. Okay, to rat number two, or you can take a different target. Uh, take rat number one, let's see. Just looking this up. Uh, so, so it's a ranged attack. Just looking at his, uh, his mage attack thing here. Plus six. Okay. Wow, that dice sucks. It's a 12. Yeah, that hits. Oh, we're done. And 1d10. Oh, uh, 8 points of fire damage. Yeah, you hit him and that rat burns up. Right Punch! Up. And it's pre-cooked. Pre-cooked. <laughs> Meat's on the menu, boys. <laughs> 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 
All I have to do is kill. Everyone starts salivating. Two <laughs> <laughs> more humans. This is, this is a great place. Edgar <laughs> says, this is a great place. Lunch comes right to you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let me get rid of this, uh, the goblin problem. <laughs> boots, you're up. Time to chow down. A boots dagger. Come on. All right, dagger. Uh, a one for the first attack. And a crit for the second. For my claws. He's the man of extremes. Oh, ask if it's, uh, if it's, uh, which, uh, which rat are you attacking? Yeah, which rack? Because you might get seen. You got to say that before you roll. Is there one that's fl uh, next to another person that I can run up to that I'm not going to uh, take an opportunity attack from? Well, there we said they're 15 feet away, so you'd have to approach one of them. The one oh, right in front of you was the one oh. that just got burned up. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm going to grab that one and stick it in my pouch as my free action. Hey, 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 hey. A giant rat. Yeah, you're going to have to cut that up a little bit first. Oh, is it, how big is it? Like a dog? Yeah. A dog stuff, right? You're eating for... Uh, yeah, that's... Few weeks, okay, yeah. so I'm going to run over to the, the closest... Well, it doesn't matter. I'll just run over to the closest one to me. Uh, get excited. I got too excited with the first attack, and I missed, and then on with my claws, which I got a crit on. Uh, oh, I did uh, six points of damage. Okay, you you slice through the next one, and uh, it's not cooked, but it's dead. Yeah. Nice raw, wriggling raw, mm. wriggling fresh. Sometimes it's better to bleed them out. They get a little tough if you cook them. But... <laughs> Big barn, you're you're up. <laughs> yeah, so there's one left, and I'm going. One left. I'm going to fire my crossbow at it. Not crossbow bolt. Not like yeah. Uh, that okay. is thirteen plus five. That is uh, five. Eight, uh, Eighteen to hit, most That's likely. It. Yeah, and a D eight. Five damage plus three, so that is eight damage. Eight damage, you pierce this thing right through the eye, and it falls over. I can see this light crossbow bolt and the, and the bow bolt, and, and the recoil throws him back a couple of feet when he fires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go grab my bolt from the, uh, from the uh, rat and see if it's uh, salvageable. Rat or uh, the... Yeah, yeah it's... it's... You uh, cut it out with your, like, we end initiative. You've killed all three of them. Um, one of them is already cooked. Um, the other <laughs> one is bleeding out. And the last one, you managed to uh, cut out the eyeball. And in the brain, you find the bolt. Uh, we should cook the brain. I hear brain is actually really nice. Mm. Yeah. All delicacy, I hear. Well, no, no I... I was raised by humans. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I eat normal stuff usually. Those are some weird humans. No, no, I not like. Brains. No, like. Yeah, <laughs> I can't really. Okay. Yeah, I'll let him believe what he wants to believe. Okay, so what what are you guys gonna do now? You've collected. You've cut up your rat. You've. Uh, yeah, we got a rat. Hey. Next few days. Well, I'm gonna sling a rat over my shoulder. Say again. I'm slinging a rat over my shoulder. I'll give the cook one to the loxodon. Or, or no, it wasn't the loxodon. It was the azimir that killed it, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. He fire bolted it. Yeah. I'll drag my uh, the one that I killed and ask the loxodon if you can. See, he, I, I, <laughs> here's your here's your dinner. Been hunting. You saying that to me? Or Orler? Orler, yeah. I don't know his uh I don't know his accent, so he says thank you very much. He said thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm setting Cannon here for his uh his Pee Wee Herman. 
<laughs> Art's gonna kill me. Is cocaine a thing in this world? <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds real cool. And masturbating in theaters. <laughs> theaters, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but it went. Yeah, yeah. Be worse to it in theaters in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. In the dark. Yeah. And yeah. stop. Stop while you're ahead. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so moving forward, uh, are you headed left or are you headed right? Are you headed north? What would it be? Northwest or southeast? Did we come to a T in the road or what? Well, you just came down one side of a cliff. Yeah. Of a, of a canyon or a, a ravine. And it's a really wide ravine. Say 120 feet. But you can see the other side, like... An Avril lip. The, the ravine cuts across the forest um, from your left where the mountain is and stretches off to your right um, beyond where you can see. Oh, I think we should follow where the uh, rats rat trail back, uh, back where they came from since... Rats usually have their nets in uh, dark oh. places. There might be, uh, oh. they might be nesting in the uh, central oh. citadel. I, I think we have enough food for now. I don't know. Well, like, what I'm stating is, we'll, we'll come back later. We don't want to kill the whole nest off because then we won't have food later. Well, I'm just stating that it might be a way into the citadel. Yeah. I, I'm just going to sniff around for footprints that we saw earlier. Yeah. You're going to smell for footprints. Or uh, look around, whatever. I can perceive. I'll I'll look. Using yeah, I my... think you're gonna have to pick up the trail. It's a survival check. Yeah, I only got an eight. Okay, you see rat rat um, footprints. Yeah, I'm they're, they're, they're not like that. moving in a direction. They're just everywhere. Uh, so, I got a twenty, a natural twenty survival. Natural twenty for survival. Okay, an, yeah, unnatural twenty. Okay, but you pick up the the footprints of the humanoids that uh, Dagger was following before, and and Dagger he he can't find them, but you you found them. Okay, Dagger, it's it's this way. The footprints go off towards the right, which is uh like a southeast direction, and they kind of follow the canyon wall. Um. Then you notice that the grade is slowly going down um, as you travel um, towards the southeast. What time of day is it? Oh, it's it's like ten o'clock. Okay. Um, what's the marching order? If um, Andros, if you're the one leading, because you're um, following the path. You yeah. at least need to be in the front group. Yeah, I'll, I can go first. I will okay. follow for a, little, up, I guess. for a little bit. Yeah, I'll be uh, around him, right Just beside hang him. Hang on to my tail. Yeah, it, the path is, I mean, the, this canyon is really wide, so you could all travel in a line if you want. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, shoulder to shoulder. For me, at least. For Kriv. Okay. I wouldn't mind somebody uh, tough up here. Is that a dig? Should we go, should we go uh, two by two? And I'll I'll team with. Uh, I'll take up the rear. I'll join you. Yeah. Or there we'll go in the back. We'll talk about our shared uh, enjoyment over rats. Okay. Oh. So I got Orlier and Varn in the back. Yep. Andros. And Crib, Crib in the front. Okay. And Dagger in the middle with his rat. <laughs> okay. Um, it's rough terrain, so the the travel time has increased, it's taking you longer now to get somewhere. But you're managing to follow the footprints, and you know you're making you know struggling over the rocks but you help each other and you, you keep going and dagger is having a discussion 
while we're walking with himself on how he's going to cook the rat tonight. I'll be taking them. <laughs> uh, Andros is assuming Dagger's paying full attention to looking for anyone that might, might attack us. Not knowing he's having a conversation with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Fully confident that Dagger's looking out for everyone's best interest. Right, right. I wonder if we can find some wild garlic. <laughs> some other spices here. That would be nice. Sautéed on a pan. Hey, uh, Dagger actually knows how <laughs> Doesn't somebody have some herbs? I have nuts. That's all I know. I got nuts. You have a, um, you have a component pouch? No. No? You guys don't have component pouches? Uh, my, uh, the thing I use <laughs> my spells with is actual, like, my tools, like, blacksmith tools and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I have, I have a block of incense, but I'm not sure Andros would use that. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for any kind of, like, uh, all basil and you know, and, you know, wild herbs and spices of some sort. Okay, the you you can keep your eyes peeled, but uh, this is pretty barren. It's like a dry riverbed kind of. It's just dusty and sandy, and not much vegetation down here. You might find something new you can use. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I Andro says to Kriv. This looks like a riverbed. Uh, what do you think these stone bricks are? Was this a, like a, a town in the middle of a river? Uh, what I know. I'm just bringing up conversation. Oh, it looks okay. weird to have a, these stones and bricks in the if this is a riverbed. It could hmm. just... Uh, make add. a history check. Well, I, I have history. You have history? Yeah. Only a good roll. Uh, six, so that's 19. Okay, 19. Um, the history, uh, what you've read in books or heard through um, tales that you've maybe overheard or listened in on is that uh, the Sunless Citadel has uh, was kind of partly destroyed as it sank into the earth, and this is probably remnants of the towers and the tops of the castle that was sprung, um, splayed out on the on the on the what used to be a ravine and now is just a graveyard of stones and rubble. Shit, this building was massive. Oh, everything's massive to you, though. Oh, massive, man. <laughs> like Neil said, giant, not massive. Oh, okay. Barn, that's good information to know. I trust, trust me, I will never forget. Okay, you guys go on walking for about an hour in this direction, and you're still following the path. Um, Andros, uh, give me uh, another survival check to make sure that you can keep up this following the path. I actually get advantage on survival. On survival? Yep. Get... Yeah. Okay. This and knows. That is, yeah, that's a 13. Yeah, you still are managing to uh, follow the path. And uh, it's, you know, they weren't trying to hide their trail. And you can you, you lose it every once in a while, but then you pick it up again. And this way, guys, it's over here. And and you're managing to lead the party. It's, it's really only one direction if you, uh, you know, this ravine is generally going southeast it's not like there's fork in the road or anything it's it's this direction but you're managing to follow the exact path that these adventurers before you took um i invite i invite varn to uh sit up on my shoulder if he wants to roll from your perspective yeah, but you're bent over sniffing the ground the whole time <laughs> am i okay <laughs> I'm still taller. I'm like at least like a normal person's height now. Horsey oh, yeah. ride. I'll do that, and I'll be just scanning the place and writing in my big notepad. Okay. Uh, in that case, everyone except for Varn 
can make a dexterity check to kind of climb their way, scramble over these stones and bricks. Don't fall, my massive friend. Don't fall. How many uh, uh, can I roll in one session? So this is an acrobatics? <laughs> seven. Yeah. Acrobatics seven. check. Seven for Andros. Yeah. Looks like Varn's going for a ride. And then uh, 16 for Orler. Okay, Orler passes. Can I... Uh, I wonder if he's an Edmonton Oiler. Uh, Can I use perception to help my, uh, 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 my elephant friend? No, he's already made his roll. Ah. <laughs> Dagger, what did you get? Varn, you're putting me off balance. Sorry, I'm... My notebooks might be a little bit big. Oh, so heavy. Dagger. I got a seven. Okay. And uh, what did uh, Kriv get? Kriv got an eight. Oh, wow. We all fall over all at once. <laughs> yeah. I'm rolling shitty today. Okay. Just, so... just see this whole party walking along and they all fall down. Nice. Right? My ball bearings or what? <laughs> Andro, Andro and Kriv, they, they both trip over this this one outcropping and then they turn around like, Hey, uh watch for you watch your step right there and Dagger he trips over the exact same thing. Basically plant my ass in Andros's I face in Andros's ass. <laughs> All right, turn, you go fly. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't from the trunk. <laughs> Varn, now you make another dexterity check. See if you can land on your feet. You can use your af- acrobatics. Acrobatics? Uh, so that's a, that is a, a 12? Yeah, 12. You you managed to land on your feet and take no damage. I'm not I'm not riding you anymore. Maybe we should wait for leveler ground before we do that again. Yeah. Okay. I'm interested in hearing your story, so. Now, can I get um, can I get Dagger, Kriv, and Andros to roll a strength check uh, to see if they can, um, you know, like you've fallen and now you need to climb, like find a way to get up out of this. Get up. Yeah, you got to get up. Yeah, this is really bad back. I got a nat twenty plus three, so I got a twenty three. Okay. You you get up no problem. Brush yourself off. Andros got a ten. Ten for Andros. Okay. Andros gets up. He kind of straightens his trunk. I got a fifteen if it's straight strength. Yeah, that that's that's a success. You stand up and you you lick your fur and get clean again. (laughs) You really are a cat. (laughs) <laughs> okay, as you travel along, um, can you make a perception roll? Everyone can make a perception roll. Uh, visual? Yes. I can't believe how many ones I've rolled tonight. Oh my god. I run a four, which was co- kind of cocked, and I rolled a two. I got a five. I got a four. <laughs> okay, it did. Holy and, crap. Um, Kriv, Kriv, it's all on you. Orler got us uh, an eight. Do I just roll a perception check? That's the highest number we can roll. <laughs> just on, sadly, a, sadly, I got a nine. Yeah, it's still oh, the highest. That's a new height. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to double digits one day. <laughs> you, guys, you guys look up and you see uh, some birds. They're flying way, way up high. And they're so pretty. And uh, then you all trip again. Looking up at the birds, my tail twitching. This place sucks. This is not a good place for a stroll. This place, I don't usually believe in bad uh, in luck and bad luck. This place makes me believe. Okay, so... Um, I don't know. Everyone roll their ac- acrobatics check. Because you all have tripped. Now, this is just if you can catch yourself before you fall again. Oh, there we got an 18. 
18's good. You catch yourself. 14. Nat 20 again. Nat 20, you catch yourself. No problem. Kind of turn Andros 15. A roll. Andros 15. Yeah, Andros is no problem. Orler Nat 20. Wow, this is the check you needed, hey? <laughs> <laughs> get over get over a pebbled rock pathway. <laughs> okay, Martin, what did you get? I got a 14. 14's passable. Okay, so um you're managing to, you know, get over these rocks. Um but because you've fallen a few times, roll another um survival check. See if you can pick up the path again. There we go. I got a unnatural 20. A 22. Oh, dang. Okay, so um, you guys, even though you've fallen and you've disturbed the ground, you go yeah. a little bit further to where you haven't yet tripped and disturbed the ground and you find the trail again. I figure that I fall on my face and I look. My face As is falling? Big. No, uh, when I land, uh, my face is basically in a shoe print. <laughs> I get up and it's like, oh, I went this way. You sniff it? <laughs> yeah, I sniff it a little. Uh, did this way, guys. <laughs> I act like I did it deliberately. I scratched dagger under the chin with my trunk. Good job, kitty. <laughs> okay, so you, you noticed that the footprints, <laughs> the footprints. Uh, go off towards the right and around uh, in a very deliberate arc. And um, you follow the footprints in this deliberate arc as to avoid maybe something that you didn't see. Can we uh, look at the ground where we go around? You can investigate. Didn't sure, cross. sure, yeah. You can do some investigation. Without, with, without touching it? Yep. Okay. Roll for investigation. Oh, I get advantage on that, too. Uh, that's a 17. Okay. You see um, that some of the bricks in this area are not tossed about. These are actually part of a, like a floor. And uh, you notice that there is like an unmortared edge where the floor doesn't have any grout. And um, the, the footsteps that you're following kind of go out and around this unmortared uh, grout line. Well, it must be a trap. Or it just, the, the grout, it just, not that, it, well, probably if I'm on there, I doesn't really matter, but... Should we toss a, a rock on it? Or cobalt. <laughs> Myself. Walk over the thing and I tap it lightly. To uh, the ungrouted bricks. You tap the bricks? The ungrouted ones. Yeah, okay. Nothing happens. Oh, yeah, probably. They're a giant mimic in there. Can I uh, pick up a large rock and throw it in the middle of this area? I hurry back. Sir. Yep, sure. You pick up a big rock, you throw it into the middle of this area, and uh, it looks like a, a door about five feet by five feet hinges down. This rock falls with it, and you hear a, a, a very faint clicking noise. Uh, I hear a clicking noise. We shouldn't be here. I think it sounds like a trap. Let's. I move away. I, I hide behind the paladin. I follow the footprints that we we're following until I see that they. End. Okay. Uh, Dagger, uh, you um, follow the footprints, and it goes to a ledge, and um, the ledge kind of. Uh, instead of it dropping down steeply, it kind of turns into more sand and kind of uh, uh, slopes down. 
and as it slopes down, you can see that um, um, there has been a, a raised section that everybody else is walking on. And since you went around, there's now that section is, uh, there's a, a wall there. So there's like a 20 foot high wall that you've now come down and around and everyone else is standing up on this raised section that they didn't see because as you looked out, it just all looks the same. You didn't notice that there was a, a section that dropped away and now you're on the lower level looking back up at the party who doesn't realize that there is a drop there. Um, hey, attention. I yell up at them. Yeah? You can fall here. Okay, in this wall, uh, Dagger, you see a wooden door. A wooden door? Yeah. I'm going to lift at the door. The door... It's a different door from where I, I threw the rock, right? Yes, uh, the, the rock you threw it was like on a trap door, and the trap door dropped down, the rock fell into it, um, and the clicking sound that you hear has just ended, and that door has now come back up into its place, and it just looks like a part of the brick floor. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, do I hear anything behind the door? Perception check? You want me to roll a perception? Um, no, um, that's fine. Yeah, you hear a, a slight wind coming out of the door, um, and the door is partially ajar. Uh, can I peer through the crack in the door? Yeah, it's just darkness. Dark vision. What do you see, You see, Dagger? You see at 60 feet of dark vision, see how far you can see into the room. That's what I have at 60 feet. Yeah. Just want to see if there's something you could see at that distance beyond where the room is. You see a goblin eye looking through the, the door. Yeah, one eye right in front of me. <laughs> uh, so the rest of the party is going to come down that slope and join you. Oh, I, I would like to wait at the top of the wall to see what happens when you. Okay. I'd, I'd like to tie myself to the uh, the elephant as if a. Uh, Fell down there, I'd probably break. Yeah, I'll I'll throw a rope down, and I'll tie it to myself from the top of the wall, so okay, that people so could grab onto a rope to? if they needed. To me. Oh, you're the anchor point. Yes. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Okay, when you peer in through this uh, wooden door dagger, um, you can see what looks like. Uh, like the room is a, a large circle. You can kind of see the curvature of the wall on the back wall. And there is a skeleton that is like been speared to the wall on the far side. That's what you can see through this crack in the that the door is open. Okay, I'm going, is the door open in or out? It opens in, and it's just open a little bit. Ooh, open. All the way. Okay, you push open the door all the way, and uh, uh, what, what it reveals is um, two other dead goblins. in there or are they speared against the wall no they're dead on the floor uh -huh. what kind of spear does it look like uh, you can't tell from this distance i'm gonna stealth in looking for traps as i go okay give me the stealth roll uh i got a 17. as soon as i see dagger go in i'll start going down towards the door yeah i'll climb her down with Probably just athletics checks for us. Kriv, what are you doing? I stay close to the wall while I'm stealthing. 
Yeah, I'll follow them. We're all climbing down. Okay, so you're all climbing. I don't understand this. You're all climbing down a rope that's tied. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure he stays up. How did? But we're all down. Then he goes down. How did Dagger get down? He followed the footprints that went around the side where there was like uh, a sandy slope that went down. Oh, the do we see feet. it from the top of the wall? You 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 could see that's the path he took. You could easily follow. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that path. You yeah. guys probably watched or saw him where I was walking. Yeah, I was just worried there was a trap door in front of that, so there was a rope there for him to grab onto if it trapped. Out oh, okay, him. sure, sure, sure. Cool, cool. So I'll follow him down the the slope there, sandy slope. Sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You kind of surf your way down there. There's no checks involved with this one. And you you want to wait outside the door, or are you going to go in this wooden door? I'm waiting outside. I'm going to peek in, because I have dark vision too, and just look at whatever uh, Dagger is doing. Okay, you can see what I've described before for Dagger. Dagger, you stealth in, and you notice... Um, uh, I said there was a skeleton on the wall with a spear in it, and he's, like, speared to the wall. And then there's two dead goblins um they look like they've been dead a long time and you as you come around the corner around the door you see there's another goblin and he's only been dead like maybe a week how high up is that spear on the wall uh it's maybe three feet up it's speared through the skeleton. Does it look like the um, the goblin was standing and it got speared through him, or did the spear lift him off the ground? No, he was standing. What is the wall made of? Brick. brick. So the spear is stuck in the brick. It could yeah. be in the brick. Yeah, that spear is stuck in the brick. What kind of spear does this look like? It looks like a fairly well-made spear. Perhaps it's uh, from an adventurer. Yeah. Or, or, Orler will go in, too. He's got 120 feet dark vision. Oh, um, behind Orler. Oh, Orler's got a... Better than me. Wow. Okay. So, is there any passages leading off of this room? Yes. Yeah, you can see um, there are two other doors, and they're pretty equally spaced apart on this kind of circular room. Um, so there's the one you just came in, and then one to your left and one to your right, kind of um, equally spaced a a across this arc. Okay, so I'm going to hug the left wall. Yeah. I'm going to look at these goblins. Can mm -hmm. I see... What was the cause of their demise? Um, I'm making it. Uh, I guess like you could do an investigation, okay. investigation role. You're you're trying to find out. Well, what are you trying to find out? I just want to see if like they died from someone cutting them with a sword, or if they're just kind of if there's like they'd be melted with acid. You know, any any kind of signs of what what would have killed them. Okay, make an investigation roll. Five. <laughs> From your five, you can tell that they were they died in battle. They uh, were probably slashed by some sort of a weapon or pierced, and they bled out here on the floor. Okay. I'm going to stealth my way towards the left-hand door. Okay. Uh... Andros will come in. He's going to cast light on his um, mall. Oh, always check for traps. Uh, yeah, candy I said, friends. Uh, I, w I was looking for traps as I came. Um, I come to. Do I get to the door yet, or what? Yeah, yeah, you're at the door. Yeah, I'm going to listen at the door. Okay. Uh, roll perception. Oh. Uh, 23. 
Yeah, the you don't hear anything. Uh, it sounds safe. There's there's no um, there's no sounds. There's no um. So no. good. Do I yeah. see is the door open or is it shut? No, this door is closed. Both both of the doors in this room are closed. The one that you came through, the wooden one, was open. Uh, I'm gonna uh, check for any kind of traps. Do I see anything? Nope. This uh, this door doesn't appear to be trapped. You're good. Okay. Um, is it a pull handle or does it have a doorknob or push? Yeah, it looks like a push. You by by the the kind of hinges on this door. It looks like it's just a push open. I'm gonna push it open. Yeah, it pushes open. And look in. Orler okay. looks in too. You look in and you see a few rats scurry away, but not large rats, just little rats. And um, I, I, um, entry's full right now. Not worth the yeah. time. Yeah. Or, or there's about fifteen feet behind Dagger, by the way. Okay. Um, you notice that the rats kind of scurry away and they kind of make footprints in the dust. There's no other footprints in the dust. Not that you can see. I make out any kind of indication of what this architecture is, like um, a clue to what kind of structure this was originally. Um, it's a castle. It uh, it has you know stonework. Um, the doors are all of similar make. They're wooden doors. Um, you know, there's no tapestries. There's no, um, it's, it's old. Um, there's nothing to indicate what kind of use this area had. It might be of, of some help as I am a, uh, I'm a professor of history. Mm -hmm. So I know something of this place. I I mean, the fact that the room is circular, it might've been a tower of some kind. But this is only one of the floors or one of the levels. Um, what do you think, my locks on, friend? Well, this uh, the first room we were in. Was it the full circle, or was it like part? If this was a tower, was it just part of the tower floor, or was it a full circle? It's a full circle. In the first room. Yeah. And then it enters into another room, which is open or like a room. hallway. You've gone up to the left door, but you haven't actually gone in that room yet. You just peered in okay. it. What What did Orler see? Orlier, you can see that it's feet. a long rectangular room, but until he goes in the room, there's really not not much he can see. Um, I, I don't know. Would you like me to sniff a little? Sure. Yeah, I'll do a sniff check. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, is that perception or investigation? Investigation, because you're actively sniffing. That's a 15. Okay, you smell the rats that are in there that, that they saw. There are small rats in that room. Uh, it's dusty, you know. It, you might, it might actually cause you to sneeze. Why don't you roll a sneeze check? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, what's that? Haven't had a smell check before, but uh oh, and that, that's a three. Three? <gasps> you let loud. You let. <laughs> loud, <laughs> you let I grab his echoes, echoes through this circular room. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, my friends. Oh, this is pretty you. dusty. When, when you when you hold in a sneeze, I grab the end of his trunks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a big part. <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> just as loud. I I smelled a lot of dust down there. It's uh, I can't give you a good direction. I'm not sure. Well, I don't think the adventuring party came this way. There's too much dust there, and the rats were leaving their tracks. Let's look at the other door. We'll skirt around back the way we came and go go towards that door that way. Okay, yeah. so you went back to the original first wooden door. Yeah, and then hugging the wall, we'll go to the door on the right. The door on the left. Okay. 
and everybody's following suit or are some people staying behind or wh what's going on? I say, let me go ahead. Let me stealth ahead. Or there will stand in the doorway. I got rolled a um, 22 for stealth. Okay. Oh. You, you or, or there will follow uh, just so that uh, he can give a second uh, opinion on what he sees. Okay. No problem. I'm like, you, you stealth up to the right hand door. And then there's this gong, 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 gong. this elf. He's a <laughs> no. He, or or there's a sorcerer, Azimir sorcerer. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, he's he's pretty stealthy. Yeah, I thought you it was the elephant. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Disadvantage on stealth rolls. <laughs> okay, so you see this door? It's identical to the other door. Swing it open and look inside, see if there's any footprints in the dust. Okay, so you open the door. And it's a long, narrow hallway. Yeah. Um, it's about, I don't know, 60 or 70 feet. At the end of the hallway, you can see... Um, you can see doors on the left and the right, and one at the end of the hallway. But um, there's no dust in this hallway. This looks like a well-traveled hallway. And uh, there isn't even footprints in this hallway because, you know, no dust, no footprints. Yeah. Wave my friends on. Telling them to come this way. Oh, Andros will, will slowly hug the wall and go that way. Yeah, I'm going to stealth down the hallway and I'm going to look for any traps as I go. Uh, stealth roll and a trap check. Yeah, she is better for the while he goes ahead. Trap check. My stealth is a twelve, actually. Um, she better for the DM to do the stealth check. I find because then you don't know. Okay, you want me to roll your stealth check? Yeah, because what happens is if the the player rolls high, then the DM says there's no traps. And he knows, then he thinks there's no traps. But if the player rolls low and he said the DM says there's no traps. And the player is not sure, but if the player doesn't know, then he doesn't no. know. Right. I like that. You can't metagame it. Okay. Meta That's true. I like that. Okay. I like that rule. I'm gonna. I, add I that. can roll your stealth, um, but uh, is it a it's a stealth roll plus something or like what do I have to add? Investigation, I think. My investigation is zero. Perception. Okay, so I just roll a perception for your trap check, not for your stealth roll, or for both. Oh, I, I roll a stealth. Yeah. You rolled a 12. Now okay. you roll, and I have a plus four to my perception. Okay, so I'll add four to my roll. Yeah. Would it be perception or investigation for traps? I think it would be... It's, if you're looking for traps, then I think it's investigation. You're, per, you're pursuing, you're looking. Perception would be more if it's like a passive thing. Uh, I, I think investigation is more to, you know, well, I guess you, I, I think you're right there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. So I, it's a, I have a zero on my investigation. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> that's fine. Perception isn't, is just yeah, like, that's fine. something uh, like. You don't, you don't see that there's any traps, which was the answer that you were probably going to get no matter what. Uh, I will uh, go down the hallway listening for any sounds. That would be perception, I assume. Um, again, uh, got a 12 on that. Okay. Okay, are, where are you right now? You're just in the hallway, or are you... I'm going down the hallway. It should be almost at the, the first set of doors. Okay. Um, you hear crying coming from the door right in front of you at the end of the hallway you hear a little whimper of a crying um, on the other side of that door i make out what kind of crying <laughs> does it can i tell if it's a human or a human or a goblin a goblin or do you know the difference between a goblin cry and a human cry? Uh, I don't know. 
just depends if you are. Actually, here, I do speak goblin, so I think I would know what a goblin sounds like over. And I speak draconic. Okay, here's my language common, draconic, goblin, speech scan. So. Okay. If, if this is something that you can distinguish, you hear crying in draconic. Draconic. Yes, draconic. 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 Bionic. Bionic. Demonic. Hmm. Draconic. Would we be able to? know the difference between like an adult and a kid i'm gonna sneak back and i'm going to go to the barn i say i think your kind is in there hey I, i've maybe, always maybe maybe you can be a little more diplomatic than yeah i i can't yeah. okay I'm going to take Barn and we'll stealth up the hallway to where we hear the crying. Yeah. <laughs> On my shoulders, I'm going to I'm going to get ready and uh, open pull the up door. your tie. I'm going to pull up my tie and um, uh, do a few coughs. <coughs> there goes your stealth roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I look at the door, see if there's any traps on the door. Okay. No, nope, doesn't look like there's any traps. Or locked. Do you try and open it? Yeah. It opens. Okay. What do we see? Let's be honest. From, from the doorway? Yeah. Um, from the doorway, you see a, a large cage. It's empty. Nope. In the middle of the room? Yep. In, in the middle of the room, you see a large cage. Um, off to one side, you see a table. Uh, there's a small fire uh, that's kind of smoldering. There's not like it's uh, a roaring fire. It's just a smoldering fire. And uh, off to the right, there is a, a small cobalt crying. I'm, I push. I push Arn forward. Mm. I, I'm going to into walk, the room. I'm going to walk up to the kobold and I'm going to tap him on the shoulder. I'm going to hurt. And you say, uh, "What's crying for, little guy?" <laughs> I'm, they took him. Uh, they what? My dragon. They t they took him. I who took you, little dragon? Those nasty goblins. And, uh, what does your little dragon look like, uh? Oh, he's not little. He is a great savage beast. Interesting, uh, if you want, we can help you find, uh, get back your dragon. Yeah, yeah, you help me. Is your friend a dragon? Yeah. <laughs> you're in, you're insight check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, roll for, roll for insight. I'm just looking in from the door, and the locks it on, walks right by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not very good. It's going to be a 11. I got a 12 on my insight. Okay, uh, Varn, you can roll with advantage. You're... you're um... Already sidled up to this guy. It's either going to be a, a, a nat one or a twelve, so I think I'm going to stay with twelve. Okay, good, good. I go pee. I'll be back in a sec. Yeah. Uh, uh, dagger runs into the corner. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, you know that, uh, or what, what you learn uh, from the insight? Uh, how does this work? He he believes it's a dragon. Um, technically, technically, it's a wormling. 
I'd so, have to, uh, whether that's classified as a dragon or whether it's uh that is a dragon it's just yeah. a baby there you go baby dragon okay so it's large in scale to him uh so he thinks it's a large dragon um meepo says or uh, the cobalt says they took my dragon carlax cricks he's our dragon Oh, uh, if you know your way around here, uh, you can show us where he uh, he might have been taken, and we can do the brute force for you, or persuade them, if you uh, wish. Uh, I would like that very much. Uh, Yusudrel, Yus our leader, he, he told me it was my responsibility. I look after him, you see. Well, you'll help us find him, and then we'll give you all the credit. Well, Great. Right. That sounds good to me. How? I'm Meepo. Did, did your uh, friend go oh. willingly with these creatures? No, he was stolen. Was he bigger than the creatures that took him? He was stolen in the night. While he was sleeping? While I was sleeping. And was your friend in this cage? Yes. He looks over at the cage. Do you want him back in the cage? Yes. Hmm. I can guide you to the leader. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. Why, why don't you just uh, wait here and just tell us which way to go? Oh, okay. Could you draw a little map for our friend? Our historian friend here could uh, draw a map with your guidance. You don't need a map. It's easy. It's easy. You be your guy. Okay. Uh, uh, you guide us around here. We are quite unfamiliar with this. Uh, you know. Meepo, go too. I can go with you. Why not? Can, oh. can, can you be quiet? Because uh, my hearing is very sensitive. We need to be quiet. Yeah. Meepo, be quiet. Well, I, I don't mind. We got one of the little guys already. It's two. Thank you. Okay, so in this room uh, that, that Meepo's in, you find this cobalt. Uh, there's this large cage. There's a table. There's this fire pit. Um, there's also one, two, three, four other doors that lead off of this room. Um, and then there's that doesn't have a door on it, but there's a hallway that leads from this room. Uh, it's, um, I haven't really been giving you directions on this, but it's uh, at Westward Passage down the hallway. Um, and Meepo informs you um, that's the way that we need to go to get to the leader. The other yeah. doors go. Uh, the other doors? Yeah. Um, well, some have my friends, and some have food. Friends are other kobolds? Yes, yes. In the cylinder, Connor. Yes. Did, did you see some, uh, um, lately? Come by here? Some lately? Oh, some humans. You know this the the hairless ones. No, Meepo doesn't see the humans. Oh. Meepo's job is to take care of the dragon. Hmm. Not a dragon. I can I walk into the room and ask him why were you keeping a dragon as a pet? And Meepo is very scared of you and and runs behind 
dagger when at sight of you. Oh, you like dragons? People. This is my dragon friend. And then I, I get down on my knee and I hand uh, the little cobalt the peanut saying, it's okay, He's we're all friends. He kind of peeks out from behind. He's not sure. Uh, he takes the peanut and eats it right away. <laughs> uh, this big, uh, our big dragon is uh, bound to, to protect the uh, unprotected. The, uh, uh, he... He, uh, he owes his life to a holy order. order. Show us where this bad people that took your dragon are, Meeple. Cal Calclax is is uh he is our our uh, protector. Um, the goblins took him in the night. Hmm. How many goblins are there? Oh, lots, lots. They always come and go. And a goblin. Big goblins or little goblins? Oh. Meepo doesn't see them very much. Hmm. My job is to take care of the dragon. Yes, we know. Well, what kind yeah. of dragon? You didn't tell us what kind of dragon this uh, dragon is. Uh, uh, a wormling? A color. Oh, he is a beautiful white dragon. Hey, hmm. Does this uh, dragon of yours have a mama somewhere? How did... Close? My job is to take care of the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, I don't think we're going to get anything out of this kid. People's a meathead. I feel like... <laughs> There was a mama. People would probably not be alive right now for losing the uh, baby, and we wouldn't have this. Uh, they wouldn't have this problem right now. It's a good point. Oh, Meepo. So, are you leaving Meepo behind, or are you letting him lead lead on? Well, he is kind of a yeah. Uh, so, Meepo. Yes. If 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 we meet other people. Probably better that you don't you you don't tell them that we're with you. Well, I'm probably fine. Don't tell them you're with me. Yeah, it's all right. I'm a little mean to him. If he looks at me, I just sneer. And he ducks behind Dagger again. People, the only person you met, a little cobalt friend right here. Oh, I have not introduced myself. Uh, my name is Varn. Hi, Varn. I'm Meepo. <laughs> Hi, Meepo. I take care of the dragon. I know. Yeah. I... From Varn, and I don't like a Meepo. I like a Varn, and I look at Meepo, and I say, It's in chromosomes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably doesn't know that word, so I'm fine with you saying that. <laughs> Anyways, can you lead us to our destination, people? Yes, yes, come this way. Yeah. Okay, so he leads you down that corridor uh, directly westward of uh, his little um, fire pit, and uh, you follow? Yeah, I follow. Okay, the rest of the party follow. Um, I think I should take the lead. I want to stay 30 feet back from Meepo and Varn. Okay. And, uh, so Meepo takes Varn's hand, and they kind of go hand in hand down this path to the west. And it's a hallway, like in the castle. It's, uh, um, you see, a um, he takes the first right, and it's a wide hallway, and, uh, it leads into uh, another um, corridor, but it's it's more like a uh, it's a big open. What's the word? Oh. It's a big open corridor that has like many many pillars. There's like fifteen pillars 
um, that run down each side of this long um, kind of hall. Yeah, that's a good... There's a hall, a long hall, and there's 15 pillars on either side that run down this long hall. And he, he kind of skips down the middle of this hall. Um, and there's two other cobalts uh, flanking uh, on either side of this uh, um, hall, kind of off to either side of the um, um, all the pillars. And um, he doesn't seem to even pay them attention. They, he just kind of looks at them and skips along. Uh, what do you guys do? I assume Barn is through unnoticed because he's a cobalt. Yep. Um, I'm stealthing from pillar to pillar trying to keep up. <laughs> okay. Yep, you stealth uh, quite quite uh, sneakily. You're in the shadows. Um, the two cobalts continue to skip down the, the length of this hall where they get to the end and... Um, Meepo introduces you to the leader. Oh. Let me go to the leader page. Um, he approaches uh, a, a kind of throne, a kind of makeshift throne uh, that's been kind of set up in front of um a statue uh, a grand statue of a, a dragon and uh, on the throne kind of makeshift throne sits Eustrael and uh, Meepo says oh leader I have a friend he is going to help me find the dragon Eustrael is a cobalt yes and he's an older cobalt who is sitting on his little pillow uh, at the end of the hall. I, I bow to him. Um, well, Meepo also bows. Kind of like, oh, right, I was supposed to do that and forgot. And he does it, he bows again. And Eustrael says... Oh, Meepo, I give you such responsibility. Oh, if only you could um, not lose the dragon. You must get him back. It's what I'm here for. Strike back against the goblins and retrieve the dragon. I I don't care how you get him back. Just get him back. We need him. Okay. But we would, Meepo uh, will go. Meepo will go as your guide. He will help you um, through the uh, the various caverns and and doorways and hallways. He knows this place. Okay. Thank you, my lord. And uh, I will achieve this for you. Oh, um, you should take this with you. Uh, it uh, it will help you. Um, he hands over um, two uh, scrolls. Um, one scroll is you know, tied up very nicely, and uh, the other one is kind of crumpled and and looks like it's been read over or, or like you know stuffed in a sack and then taken out and stuffed in a sack again, and it's 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 been around. Thank you, my liege. It will not disappoint. Okay. And can I use Arcana to see what these, uh, if these scrolls are, uh, magic scrolls? Yeah, you can roll for that, yeah. Oh, and what spell they are. Yeah. Uh, 19 plus 4, that's, uh, 23. So you have a scroll of mage armor? 
And you have the one that's all crumpled up and crinkly is a spell scroll of spider climb. And Orler eyes the mage armor. Uh, you guys aren't present. You guys are oh. back around the corner. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, as far as I know, dude. the only one who stealthed up was Dagger, and otherwise it's been um, just Varn and Meepo. Okay. Everyone and me else is, I'm, I'm going to say everyone else has not even entered the hall. They're just hanging back in the darkness of the hallway. Oh, Meepo, uh, let's let's begin our quest. Just to save a dragon. Okay, let's go. And follow uh, me. Uh, I follow Meepo. Okay, and Meepo um, leads you through a hallway uh, very close to where you are. Um, it kind of goes out the other end of the large hall with the pillars. Um, Does he go by us? No, he's headed. Uh, he's headed south from the hall that was uh, east-west kind of a room. Oh, hiding my... Orler's gonna, Orler's gonna message uh, Dagger uh, when you guys come back. Killer, but in line of sight of the other guys, but hidden from the other kobolds. Gonna wave at the other guys to come. Really quickly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're Don't we have to find... walk by all these dudes? Yeah. There's two, there's two other dudes in the room, and they're like sentries on watch there. They're just standing there. And the Cobalts walk by totally fine because they were Cobalts and, you know, Meepo. Um, Dagger is totally stealthed. Are you going to all try and stealth past these guys or like... No. I'm going to calmly just start walking towards them. Like I belong there. <laughs> okay. I won't stealth. <laughs> it won't work. No. <laughs> okay, what about Dagger? What are you doing? I'm stealthing. Okay. i stealth after Meepo and Aranova. Okay, and your stealth is plus four? Um, is that your, your stealth? I got a plus eight for my stealth. Plus eight? Okay, you're in the shadows. You sneak all the way and you're following Meepo and Varn. <laughs> say about uh, 30 feet behind. So mm -hmm. you can see Meepo and Varn, but you can still see what's happening in the hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest of the party, the three of you who have been hidden in the hallway, now just walk out, um, not really attached to anyone or anything, and you start walking down I, uh, I, I'm all gonna... the pillars on either side. I'm gonna... I'm going to look back. Back here. People. One moment. Uh, the other guys need to come through and the old thing can't really uh, hide. Uh, I'm telling this to Meepo and I'm going to ask him if he can come back with me for a moment. Oh, well, this way goes, this is a faster way back to them. Let's go oh, this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm gonna whisper to you. Uh, they have a faster way around. It's a faster way going backwards. A faster going backwards. I tell whoever's with me, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Dagger, is, Dagger is a shadow. Uh, everyone else, are you stepping out into the hall? Are you going to stay in the shadow of the, the hallway that you're waiting in? Well, Dagger motioned for me to follow. Okay, so you're stepping out into the hall. Yeah. Yes. This is happening. This oh, is shit. happening. Okay, no stealth rolls. Um, the two kobolds on either side of the room, uh, they've got spears, and, uh, you know, they're not like a, they're a cobalt spear, but they both draw their spears... Or, and point them at you and say, Halt! In Draconic. I halt. Uh, I stop. Do you speak Draconic? Nope. But I does do. I'm with them. Does anyone in the three... Does Erlier or Kriv speak Draconic? 
Kriv speaks draconic. Okay, so you understand that they're saying halt. What? Can I say yes? Uh, what are you doing here? My other party members are ahead. I am joining them. What other party members? We didn't see any party members. The uh, one... It's our master, the Cobalt. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, they're my slaves. <laughs> uh, okay, so Varn and Meepo, you're, you've already left the hall. I know, that was... Your dragon keeper, we are here to help you find your dragon. Oh, did you talk to the leader? No, but our friend has. has. Uh, we need to the, take you to the leader. Let's go to your leader. No problem. Okay, so you walk down the hall uh, at spear point uh, to the leader. Okay. I just do it like there's no, nothing wrong in the world. Okay, so you approach the leader on his pillow throne. Yes. And he looks down on you from his pillow. No, be up. I, 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 I get down on one knee and I say, my my oh. lord, uh, my master was just here speaking to you and uh, I'm afraid uh, we got separated from him. Are you... Who are you? I don't I'm understand Andros what you're Hill. saying. <laughs> yeah, I just speak anyways. <laughs> uh, yep. What's your character's unless name? They're, unless they're an uh, animal, I can't speak to them. What is your character's name? Mine is Andros. Hello. And Euler is with us. So I speak to the leader and say, hello, these are my friends. We are... Uh, you just spoke to, or we are with the, the cobalt that is looking for your lost dragon. Oh, finally, a hero come to free the dragon. This is, you are my kind of hero. You will be successful. Um, Eustrael hands you a uh, elixir of health. Sweet. It's a small flask that contains three doses. And I look at him expectantly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, leader, do you have something for my friend? Friends? Euler and Andros are there with him. Uh, okay. Uh, he gives... He gives... Uh, Orlear uh, a scroll... And he gives um, Andros, he gives you a feather. A feather. Can we, uh, can I just ask a couple questions? Yeah. I'm not too familiar with uh, D&D, but so Dragonborn and Dragon are two different thing things, yeah. right? Yeah. One is like essentially a wild animal and one is like a humanoid that's mixed with a dragon. Right. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Fine. Where did uh, where did our friends go to uh, go towards? They they went this way, and he motions to the right, southward down this passage. Perfect. I signal to my friends, and we head over to that direction. While we're walking, uh, Euler will look at the scroll. Yeah. Does it say anything? He understands. Um. Yeah, he, he would understand that this is a, a scroll of uh, the Nox Bell. Okay. So it's just like a one-time use? Yeah. Oh. And I don't know about this feather, do I? Uh, you think it might it might make let you fly. Hmm. Okay. And I hold it in yeah, my If you end believe of my hard trip. enough. You might be able to fly. I've I've heard elephants used to be able to fly. This is exciting with their ears. Well, this might put me over the top. 
Beck, are you finding D and D Beyond? Is it working for you? Like adding stuff to your inventory? Uh, yeah. Oh. Doing pretty well. Mine's not working. You're using Chrome. Yeah. Okay, um, so you follow the pathway, and uh, I don't know, that dagger, were you were motioning to the other two to, to slow up? Are you now going to cluster and group as a party again? What's going to happen here? The uh, boss thingy there, and did you guys slow? Did you stop? I slowed down a little bit. You stopped with his face, um. Meepo, I'm, Meepo. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. So we're not we, stopped. We're just moving a lot slower. I'm gonna sneak up to them. Meepo, I'm wait for the others. I say that in draconic. Okay. Yes, yes. We'll wait. We'll wait here. So the others catch up, and now you can move as a party in this hallway and. Meepo leads you back to the room that you found him in with the uh, the, t- the table and the cage and the fire pit. It took us the long way around the second time. Well, it was shorter for him from where he was. Why did it take us the other way that time? Look, I'm looking at the map here. I can see <laughs> what's shorter, okay? <laughs> So, just to clarify, what is the elixir of healing? Is that a... I'm just trying to add it to my inventory. It is. What I have is a a 4d4 plus 4 hit points. Okay, I have... 10 health points, it says. So you have three uses of... 10 health points. So 30 hit points. So 30 hit points. Okay, cool. And you can yeah, split. So it, it's like three doses. So it's 10, 10, and 10. And it's like three swings. Oh, uh, Meepo, where do we go now? Okay, so he takes you to uh, one of the doors at the north um, no, east wait. corner of that room that has the cage where you we first found him. Mm-hmm. Are we all together now? Yeah, we are all together. Yeah, we're all together now, and um, you notice that this door—it's a wooden door, but somebody smeared like black across the door. Like a big black X. X. Is that to notify? Uh, I'm asking me for this. Is that to notify that is uh, that is the direction towards the enemy? Yes. This is this is the goblin door. These are where the goblins are. <laughs> and uh, I want to just uh, before you go any further, let's just take a five minute break, and you guys can use the bathroom or get a beer or stretch your legs. I want to kind of. Um, make this a part of the night or right around nine o'clock we take a break and uh and let's do that right now awesome so thanks five minute break so i can do detect magic if anyone wants to check out stuff i just have this feather i'm curious about what if i jump up with the feather in my trunk <laughs> <laughs> and I tried flopping. This is just with your ears and, and the feather. Whoa, this is just <laughs> too funny. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. You are following Meepo. Um, I keep here. thinking you saying meatball. Can yes, you meatball? Do you play uh, Dota? Say it again. I just broke up. Do you play Dota? I don't. I don't remember what. Every time you say that word, you like cut out. <laughs> it's Dota again. Dota. Dota. I've never played it. Okay. 
That's Never a mind. acronym for something, though, right? Dota, yeah, Defense of the Ancients. It's like a League of Legends, like the same thing, but Steam. Oh, I... But there's a character called Meepo. Oh. No, Meepo comes right out of the this man, the monster manual with suggestions for names of kobolds. Oh, huh? sweet. Yeah. I once played a character with the name of Meepo. Wizard. It's a common kobold name. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like Joe. <laughs> okay, we're going down the hallway so with Meepo. Far. Yeah, you follow Meepo through this door with the big black X on it. And um, he's leading the way. Um, he's a little bit timid as to, you know, he knows that this is where the goblins are. Um, the the hallway kind of snakes back and forth. And uh, you come to the end of the hallway and there is a door leading north. But this is the only door that you've seen. This hallway kind of leads from his room with the cage um this is the the only pathway from that room with the cage um behind this black door so where is everybody else because i'd like to stealth apart from the party at least 30 feet oh Oh, meepo's leading the way during this section and you come up to this next door and meepo says this is as far as i've gone i have never gone any further than this that's all you're guiding us I know, I know, the uh, the ways, but this is as far as I've gone. Oh, so you, you know your way around beyond this, though. So. Still, yeah, yeah. Even though you haven't been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't been. Can, can I roll an insight on that if he's actually telling the truth? Yes, you can roll an insight. Ah, for frick's sake. An eleven. Um, you can tell that uh, Meepo is uh, this doesn't want to go first anymore. He has been all throughout this cavern, but he just doesn't want to go first anymore. Uh, I'll, I'll stealth ahead. Which oh. way, Meepo? Point the way. Well, there's this one door north. That's the way. I'm gonna stealth ahead. Okay. I'm 18 for my stealth. Okay, you're good. Uh, are you gonna ch- like open the door? Open the door. Okay, you open the door. It's a, a room that's 20 feet by 40 feet. It looks mm-hmm. empty. I search for any kind of traps as I cross the room. Okay. Oh, I guess you're. I'm rolling. gonna. Are you ahead of us? Yeah. Before trying. you go ahead of us, can I touch you and do give you guidance? Okay. Will you allow that? Um, sure. I'll allow it. Okay. I'll you re-roll go. your your trap check roll. Okay. Add a four to the C four. Okay. Yeah. You don't see any traps. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna ask Meepo. Out of pure curios- uh, curiosity, how old he is? Uh, six. Eight. Nine, six. This many. And he holds up two hands, each with three fingers. Uh, well, uh, I, I, uh, I'm 34 and I start flashing my hands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. I, I walk across the room. There's another door, I assume, on the other side of the room, or what? Yeah, there's a door directly across from you. Okay, I'm going to check out this door. Okay. Look at it and then look for a trap. Okay. All right, is he still blessed, or, or what is guidance? Does he still have guidance, or is uh, it just a so roll? As, as soon as. Uh, we- when he uses it, it's done. Okay, you don't see any traps. Okay. Um, I'll wait for the party to catch up to me. Let's I kind of wave them forward. I lumber along. They all come into the empty room. 
Um, I open the door. Okay, you open the door. <laughs> Do you uh, go into the room? I look in first. Okay. What you can see from the doorway is uh, that there's a, sort of a room, uh, sort of like the one that you were just in. It's kind of empty. Um, on one side of the room, you see a, a fountain that has no water in it. It's old. It's dusty. It's been there a long time. And then towards the end of the room, there's a corridor that leads away uh, off to towards the north. Um, there is another door west, uh, another wooden door to the west, and the fountain is opposite of that. So there's a fountain on your right, a door on your left, and then the hallway continues forward out of the room like a corridor. In which way, Meeple? Well, uh... um, Meeple, it's kind of behind your your boot dagger. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he he points um, forward down the hallway of uh, the corridor. I ask uh, Dagger, can you uh, check out the water uh, water fountain? You're gonna go kinda... investigate the water fountain. Okay, guidance. You can roll. Uh, sure, you can guidance, and then you can roll an investigation on that water fountain. Sixteen. Uh, investigations here again you have yeah. okay you you look over this fountain it has like it's a like a dragon uh, shaped statue and it looks like the water would come out of its mouth and kind of spill out onto other um, pieces and they would spill out and then there's like a basin in the bottom that catches uh it's all dry, there's nothing there, but you see that there's an inscription that's mostly worn away, and the inscription is in Draconic. Uh -huh. and since you speak Draconic, um, the inscription reads, Let there be fire. Mm. There be fire. Um, I say to my uh, Azamar friend, you can uh, shoot fire. Uh, says, I yeah. can shoot fire. Yes. Or no, Draconic or Azamar? Yeah, Azamar. Yeah. Yes, it, I can. I I can cast like fire bolt. You uh, put a little fire on this dragon on the fountain here. And sure. Why don't we all back up a little bit? <laughs> back up a little. Yeah. And while uh, after he's done that, I'd also like to roll history to see who built this cathedral like to see if i know how as we're doing this andros is going to look around the room is there like openings or anything like that in the ceilings or walls make a perception check that's cocked uh that's a oh i get advantage are you smell checking same, same roll no, it just says, oh, no, I'm not. So that was an advantage. So the first roll was 17, though, and uh, plus three, so not natural 20. Okay. There's, there's no, um, there's no uh, holes or, or other nefarious things about this room. Okay. Uh, so, uh, or, Orler, um, once everyone's kind of backed up, he'll cast a firebolt at the, fountain into the water there's no water oh, i thought it was a fountain it's a yeah, dry but fountain. it's dry oh okay i'll just shoot one at the where it normally comes out okay um yeah it it just kind of it burns up uh no real effect <clears throat> it has to have to be actual fire not magic fire What was about, the... uh, Orler says, how about this? And he tries to mage hand. He touches the fountain. He Orlier is mage handing the fountain? What is he doing? I have a little bit of an oil flask. I have an oil flask. I'm going to pour a little bit of oil into the where the fountain is. Take the, mm -hmm. where, the, 
where the water would go. Yeah, yeah. You just pour the oil. Okay, the oil runs down the drain. It's lost. Oh. Is this like look like a regular fountain, or is there a statue above it? Uh, the like it's... fountain is made up of a dragon statue, and it looks as if the water used to come out of his mouth and splash down on things and be caught in a basin. So, Orler's going to mage hand and just kind of pat down the dragon in various spots, like the head and the feet and the fountain and see if that does anything you you pat it down nothing happens hmm. uh, we've wasted enough time on this stupid fountain <laughs> before we go I'm just well it doesn't matter where, where I'm going how, how is it lined up is it lined up towards the door it, it is facing uh, the, the door behind you the door you came in is is to the south, and yeah. the dragon is on the east wall facing west. Okay. Looks you guys fine. Want... Looks like it's just out of steam. And I roll history to see if I knew I know who built the uh, citadel. Okay. That's cocked. Doesn't matter. I got a one. <laughs> uh, you think it was built by dragons? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Let's continue. Lead on, Meeple, or tell us where to go. I'll lead. I'll I'll stealth ahead thirty down the hallway. Is that okay. the way? You to go yeah, right down the hallway. Uh, let's say twenty-four. A lot better than one. Um, and you're thirty feet ahead. Yeah. Okay, you come across. Uh, there is like an alcove to the left and an alcove to the right. Um, mm -hmm. the one on the right has like rumbled in and caved in on itself. Um, so it, it only goes like 10 feet and then it crumbles in the one on the left. Um, it's a little alcove and then there's a, another wooden door, but the hallway continues North in front of you. Uh, um, you can see, you can see North in front of you. There is a number of doors. There's three doors on the left and three doors on the right. And then that continues further beyond, but you can't see see any that's much too far for you to see down now yeah i'm going to just kind of hide in the shadows and wait for the for meepo to catch up okay meepo catches right up to you and kind of tucks himself behind your boot yeah. at, at, in the first alcove where you're hiding in the shadows yeah and i say where from here and um he points to the door behind you that that um, leads to the west, but he doesn't take his eyes off the corridor in front of you. He's very oh. concerned about that corridor in front of you. Meepo, what's so scary about that corridor the, uh, in front of us? I'm going to roll out my ball bearings down that corridor. <laughs> Does Orler see anything with his 120 feet dark vision down that corridor? He sees uh, a 120 feet dark vision. Yep. He and Ol can see that there's another fountain at the end of this corridor. Same, and he... sort of, same sort of fountain that you just passed. There's another one at the end of the corridor. He expresses that to everybody. Hmm. So oh, what's... You're throwing, are you throwing ball bearings or are you uh, not doing throwing ball bearings down the hallway? How many? We we at oh, how far? Uh, down. Uh, I'll throw it down so that it's like uh, ten feet in front of us. If anybody comes down that way, they're gonna roll and slip and fall on them. Um, and we'll go in that door. That's that was the alcove door that he was he was pointing towards, right? Yeah. Or Orler will uh, say, "I'll stay here in the hallway in front of the door." 
and I'll just keep an, a lookout. Can we yeah, ask Meepo got... if he knows what's down that hall? Yeah, you can ask him. Yeah, Meepo, do you know what's down that hallway? And he pees his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Meepo. You're so useless. <laughs> hey, hey. He's a girl. He's just sex. He's just... He's just became an adult, you know? Uh, okay, so... All right, which which way... Where is everyone going? I mean, I don't have little uh, tokens or... Um, oh, I'm going to check out this door in the alcove. Yeah. Traps. Can you give me a little bit of guidance? Yeah, guidance. I'm gonna be uh, trying to. I'm gonna Are you gonna roll this, uh, Jason, or you want yeah, me to? I'll roll it. I'll roll it. You got guidance. Yep. So guidance adds a D4. D4. Okay, I'll roll that. Or actually, you can roll the D4. Put put some of the fate in your own hands. Roll the D4. <laughs> You got a two? Yeah, a two. Okay, the door does not appear to be trapped. And while he's doing this, I'm getting a... I'm wetting a rag and I'm uh, trying to clean Meepo's pants. So Euler's just going to stay quietly out in the hallway, looking back and forth, and just keeping a lookout. I'm going to listen at the door. Do I hear anything through the door? No, you don't hear anything. I'm gonna put it a crack and look through. Okay. Um, from the hallway mm -hmm. that has the ball bearings that or Lear is staring down, um, six rats come out of the six doors. Giant, disgusting looking rats. Do they are they walking upright or are they walking like rats? They're walking on all fours like rats. So they open the doors or were the doors open? The doors are open. Okay. Uh, he immediately uh, tells everyone what he sees, and he's gonna shoot a firebolt down at one of them. Okay, roll initiative. Oh, good. What was that? Ooh. Kriv gets a, a 21. Oh. What's your dexterity? Dexterity is 12. So I'm before you, then you're after me, and then... Okay, to, uh, 25 to 20. I hear it. Kriv's got 21. I got 21 also, but my dex is higher than that. Yeah, he okay, goes so first. Barn, Barn's going first. Uh, Andro's got a natural 20 with a plus one, so 21. <laughs> That's the same roll I got. <laughs> we have this the last time. <laughs> Our apps must be in sync. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I use the real dice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so weak. What's your dex, Andros? We're we're old. We're uh, animals. Uh, my dex is uh, thirteen. What's me? Okay. You. So that's. And I got a fourteen. What did the uh, or or logo uh, or? Oh, he l rolled pretty low. You got an eight. Okay. So, um, if I got this right, it's Varn Andros Kriv. Yeah. Dagger, and then Orlear. Oh. Orlear, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's six rats. They're all charging down the hallway, and there are ball bearings between you and them. Okay. A creature moving across a covered area must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or fall prone. 
Okay. Cruiser moving through the area at half speed doesn't need to make the save. Okay, so dexterity. And it covers an area 10 square feet. Maybe. Sure, so I, I it covers the whole hallway there. They're all going to have to roll for this. Um, would would they be get to the ball bearings yet, or are they still a ways away from it? They are... Yeah, they're right at the ball bearings. Uh, like, they're kind of coming just, down. They're coming down the hallway in pairs. And the first. The, the pair, reason I ask yeah. is, will it affect uh, if they do go prone? It'll affect our ranged attacks. So I'm just wondering if they'll, if we we'll get any ranged attacks off before they hit the ball bearings. Oh yeah, it. They will make their save at uh, the beginning of their turn when they move. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so first to go is Varn. Okay, so using my free action, I'm going to hand. Uh, uh, why can't I remember the, the little kobold's name? Meepo. I'm going to hand Meepo my dagger. Uh, use this if you need to. Uh, I'm going to tell him and um, just give it give it back to me later. It's my only dagger, and I'm going to use my light crossbow and fire at one of the uh, rats. Okay, so the way I've labeled the rats here um, are 1 to 6, and um, 5 and 6 are the first two rats that are coming down the hall at you, and then 3 and 4 are behind them, and 1 and 2 are the furthest away. I'll, I'll do uh, 6. Okay. 17 plus 5, it doesn't really matter at this point, it's... Uh, 22 and a d8 where's uh yeah there yeah great that is four damage i'm gonna use my own game and uh and the uh recoil from that sends me uh the uh, foot uh backwards below yeah so, okay Okay. Okay, so you shoot that crossbow bolt and it pierces that giant rat and uh he's still coming at you. He's he, he's taking some damage but he's not down. Uh, next is Andros. Uh Andros uh sees uh Kriv's attack there, he's gonna do a sacred flame at that same rat okay. that got hit by the crossbow. Uh, it's a dexterity DC 13 saving throw. Okay. He fails. Alright. That's a D8. And that's four points of damage. Okay. Okay, he... He's looking real bad, but he is still up. Uh, Kriv, you're next. Yeah, I uh, walk in front of... What's been damaged? Six and five? Just or just six? six? I walk in front of five Yeah, and do a, a breath weapon. Okay, he is still, like... I'd say 20 feet from you. And there are ball bearings between him and you. So you want to approach him over the ball bearings, or are you going to wait for him to come to you? you can I will... Hold. I will uh, yeah, I'll hold... I'll hold up my shield and hold action until they're in front of me. Okay, yep, that's fair. And what are you going to do with your action? You have to, in this, in this uh, edition, you have to state what you're going to do with your action. And then you, when when they get to you, you use your reaction to do whatever you state. Okay, yeah. So my reaction would be uh, use my breath weapon uh, to hit uh, five, three, and one. Okay. Can you hit? Can you? Uh, um, does your breath weapon affect that many squares at once? Yeah. So it's exhale in a five by three line. Would that hit? Five by three feet or five uh, feet, yeah. Five feet wide by 15 feet long. 
Yeah, that's what I uh, believe. Five by 30 feet. Okay, yep. Yep, you can do that. So, it, it, could I hit if it's a 30 feet? If Yeah, if they all come forward at the same time, you'll hit all three of them. But how much is a square considered? Like, a would I be able to five. Do five. So if it okay, yeah, that makes sense. Is a ten foot wide uh, hallway? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I hold up my shield and wait until they approach. Okay. So that's Crib's turn. Dagger, you're up next. Hey. Um, I'm gonna have a range attack. Throw a dagger if you have one. Mm. Oh, I have a short bow. I'm gonna pull up my short bow and uh, take a shot at. Uh, I'll I'll take a shot at number six since it's already been hit a few times. Okay. Uh, six. So twenty-one. Twenty-one hits. And, and he takes uh, six points of damage. He goes down. He doesn't even get to step forward. He just goes down right there. Bites back a bit on its own blood. Okay, is that your turn? Lots of dinner happening. Dagger, is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, uh, number five rat... He's turn. Going to, six is dead. Number five is going to run forward. And he's got to make a dex check to avoid falling prone, right? Yeah. What's the DC again? Yeah. Okay, he passes. He succeeds. And he's going to run up. If he runs up and attacks... Criv, he gets his attack before the reaction. Oh. Reaction happens first. But his reaction was to it when they're within range, right? Yeah. So as soon as he got within range, he would just blast him, I assume. I think he was waiting for all three to get in range, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for the first one, like, yeah, the last one to get in range, too. Okay, so then you're going to take the attack of the first one, waiting for the others to catch up before you blast them all? Yeah. Okay. So the first one's going to attack you. And he's going to bite for 12 to attack. No, that just doesn't hit. Okay. Uh, then it's Orlear's turn. All right. Uh, Orlear is going to take... Uh... I guess the one that is right in front of um, Dragonborn there, and yeah. do a Firebolt. Okay. So that is a ranged attack. And... That's an 11. 11 misses. Damn it. That's his turn. Okay. He's going to actually back up a little bit or there. Yeah. He's going to back up like to the back of the group. Okay. Maybe uh, 20 feet. Okay. Now the other guys, uh, the other rats are going to go and two of them make their save and two of them are going to fall prone. Um, so, uh, three and four um, come rushing forward. Um, as far as targets, it looks like Kriv uh, is up front. He's the only one who's really uh, faced the attack. Uh, Andros, where are you? I would have been, I think, close up there on the right side or something. Are you, You're shooting a ranged weapon, though. I was, yeah. Okay, are are you presenting yourself as a, re a viable target? Yeah, I'll present as a target. Okay, then uh, I'll have each of the rats roll again. 
either of you. Okay. Kriv, does a 10 hit? No. Okay, the other guy got natural 20. Oof. Ooh. Does he have a chance to breathe his breath weapon before they do this, or no? Uh, come. All of them get into range. Holding, he's holding until he can get all three of them. Oh, okay. yeah. So, not I yet. You're there yet. So, how well, much did they hit me for? 20. Okay, so. Which one was he hitting? Me or uh, Kriv? Uh, the one that the one that attacked Kriv uh, missed. The one that hit you has a natural twenty, and so you're going to oh. take eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Oh, oh, that hurt. That was a crit. So. Oh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the other two rats. Uh, they they both slip on the ball bearings and fall prone, so they do not proceed down the hallway. Which does, I mean, if you're waiting for them all to come in a line, those last two just fell down, so they they're not in a line to trigger that. You can, if you want, I'll let you trigger your breath weapon at the two that are in front of you. Mm. They're only uh, ten feet, though, right? The first. Two the first two are right there in a line, lined up. You can bre- you can breath weapon the two, but the, the last one is still much further away. You see, like twenty feet behind them, on Annie's prone. I don't know if it's worth it using a breath breath weapon. Otherwise, you're going to waste the your your whole turn is wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Light them up. Okay, let's do it then. Yeah, I'll I'll uh breath weapon the. Uh, okay, that's I'm still gonna... roll, you still have to roll to attack, or is it a deck save? Deck save. Yeah. Is is it the ones in the ball bearings or the ones right in front of them? It's the the one ones right in front. front. Yeah, it says deck uh deck DC twelve. Okay, they both fail their save. How much damage do they take? Uh, two D six acid damage. Okay. Roll it up. Okay. Uh, two of these. Oh, that's not... Uh, five. Okay, they both take five damage. Okay, now it's Varn's turn. Uh, okay, you so... Got, you got rats one and two that are prone, and they're about 40 feet away from you. And you got three and four. Uh, one that is taking some acid damage. Uh, one that hasn't been hit at all. And then rat five that's right up front. He's taking some acid damage. Oh, rat five with the crossbow. Okay. Plus you sh- five. That thirteen hit. Thirteen hits. And that is. Six plus three, that is nine damage. That takes him down. Five is down. Yep, five is down. Okay. Was that the one in front of me? Nope. Four is in front of you. Okay. Yeah, my uh, my bolt punctures its lungs, uh, lungs as it takes its final breath. Okay, uh, Andros, you're next. next. I point to the one that uh, attacked me and did a lot of damage, and I say, this one I'm going to be eating, but uh, I need some <laughs> help here, and I'm going to disengage and walk to the back of the group. Like, next to Orler, like 20 uh, feet back. The one that did damage is like right in front of you, and you're disengaging and walking away from him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Because I am seriously near death. Okay. If you need help, I have uh, I have cure wounds over here. Oh, yeah. I, I can heal myself too. I just want to be yeah. careful. I just want to be at the back. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of heals. 
We just yeah. got to be strategic about it. Yeah. Okay, so you're walking 20 feet back. Yeah, next to Orler. Kriv's turn. Um. Yeah, can I... I can't, like, position myself so I'm, like... They have to go by me. Nope. No, um... No, it's like a grid system, right? Yeah, it's a grid system. So the, the hallway's 10 feet wide, and you occupy 5 feet, 1 square. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to attack the... Uh, the one to the right of me. Not directly right. Forward right. The one that attacked Andre. You got three and four. Four attacked uh, Andros. And three you just spit acid at. Yeah, let's attack uh, four. Okay. Roll to hit. Uh, 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And then... Why does it look good? Like uh, five for damage. Okay, he takes five damage. Then my turn's over. Okay, uh, Dagger, you're next. Dagger, it's your turn. Right. Dagger, Dagger, uh, Dagger. So Dagger drops. How far, f- far in front of me are these... Uh... Three, three and four are like ten feet in front of you. They're just on the other side of Kriv. Yeah, I'm gonna run up to three and four, drop my my short bow, uh, pull up my rapier, and attack number three first. Um, is he flanking anybody? Uh, well, it's a ten foot hallway, so you'd be shoulder to shoulder with Kriv. Three's okay. in front of Kriv, and four's in front of you. Go to the one beside Kriv there. Um, with a team to hit. Yeah, that hit. and I have my, my sneak attack to that. Or, or uh, points of damage. Say again. Eleven points of damage. That cuts him, cleaves him right in half. And then I'm going to walk over to number... Was that three or four? That was three that you just cut. I'm going to walk over to four and give him a strike with my claw. Okay. A um, 13 to hit. That hits. And for two points of damage. Okay. He takes two points of damage. He's still up. Okay. Next is Orlier. Uh, so Orlier is going to cast a firebolt um, at number four. Okay. So that is a ranged attack. He rolls an unnatural 20. Okay, that hits. And damage will be... A big old one. One? Uh, fire damage. <laughs> how, could, how do you roll a one on a natural 20? <laughs> uh, I guess it'd be a... No, it was an unnatural 20. Oh, okay. So you, you expertly shot your firebolt between your owl and singed his tail. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, he takes one point of damage. At least his, tail, yeah. his yeah. tail's on fire. He's bleeding, and it's still snarling at you. Well, he's uh, 20 feet back with the uh, Andros. Yeah, he, he's, he's looking between the shoulders and he's snarling right at you. Okay. Yeah. He's got he's got it out for you. All right. Uh, now it's the rat's turn. Um, let's go 
to um he's got to get up from prone and he's got to crawl forward or like move slowly half movement forward he's going to do the same they're not going to try and run through this again and three is going to attack Kriv and four is going to attack Dagger. Okay. Cool. Cool three. Okay. In this case, um, Dagger, your rat rolled a five, and Kriv, your rat rolled a natural twenty. Kriv, you're going to take six points of damage. Okay. This rat somehow got over your shield and has chomped onto your shoulder, and you're now bleeding from the shoulder. Okay. Oof. And up to the shield. How are you feeling over there, Kriv? Uh, I'm feeling about 50%. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other two rats, um, they they run forward, um, but they they can't seem to get around their allies. And the people are bleeding, and um, I'm going to say that uh, you know just moving slowly through the ball bearings, they're not able to get an attack in this turn. Okay, now we top of the order, Varn. Um, and Varn when will you learn? is going to run up to Kriv and cast... No. I'm not going to run up to Kriv. I can deal with his health on his own. I'm going to shoot... Uh, I'm going to shoot number uh, four with my crossbow again. Number four? Okay. Uh, that is nine plus uh, five, so that's 14. Most likely. Hit. And that is damage plus three that is 11 damage. <laughs> yes, 11 damage. Somehow, this this crossbow bolt, uh, mm -hmm. you, you've got a sharpshooter and just fills him full of arrows, and he is now dead. He's not able to get his revenge when he falls over. Uh, is that your turn? Is his tail still on fire? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, you done? I'm done. Andres, you're up. All right, so there's, what, three rats left? There's three rats left. Uh, two of them haven't made any attacks, haven't taken any hits, and one of them has taken a little bit of damage and is currently in front of Kriv, biting on his shoulder. Okay. I am going to attack that one in front of Kriv with a Sacred Flame. Okay. It's a Dexterity DC 13. Okay. He saves. Yeah, no damage. Cool. And that is Andros' turn. Okay, Kriv, you're up. There's a, there's a rat biting on your shoulder. I grab him, throw him in front of me, and attack with my sword. Roll to attack. That is 11 to hit. Okay. Uh, 11 misses. Oh, uh, shit. You're, you know, you're thrown off balance and you toss him to the ground and the swinging of the long sword just comes down and it, it doesn't hit anything. Clatters across the floor. I mean, not the sword, just it strikes the floor. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Dagger, your turn. And I got pounce on that one. <laughs> okay. Ah, sh uh, so I attack it with my rapier with a nine, which misses. Then I'm going to slash at it with my claw. When you have sneak attacks because it's next to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to hit first, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he did a nat 20, so. 
And your claws just Fuck. always roll good. Uh, I got uh, nine points of damage with my claw. Okay. Takes you, his head off. You, yeah, you rip into the, the top of his head, and peel back his skull and his brain. Ooh. Yeah, I'm used to killing rats with my claws. That thing. <laughs> Do you start growling if anyone gets near it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three goes down. It's now Orlear's turn. All right, Orlear is going to cast uh, Firebolt at the one in the back there. The one in front of Kriv in the back. Which one? The one on the left or the one on the right? Well, whichever one is directly in front of Kriv. Uh, the one in directly in front of Kriv just went down. The other oh, I two, thought there's two behind him. Yeah, the, there's two behind, like uh, further down the hallway. They're not behind yeah. Kriv, they're further down the hall. And they've just come through the ball bearings. They haven't yet gotten an attack and they haven't yet taken any damage. Okay, well, I'll take the first one in the lead then. Well, they're they're coming down shoulder to shoulder. You pick left. Back, I'll right. go left. Okay. Left. Make your attack. <sighs> That's a big old nine. 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 It's <laughs> right, right between them. Misses both of them. Yep. That's his turn. Okay. So these two rats are going to approach and attack Dagger. We're up in front, and you just massacred. Two. Uh, or, yeah. Don't don't they have to go over the ball bearings? They have. They oh. they the the first they first fell prone, and then instead of trying to make a check to roll through them, they just went slowly and don't have to make a check, which is why they gotcha. didn't get an attack last turn. Gotcha. So they they okay. walked slowly through all the ball bearings and didn't make a check, and now they're here and can attack. But uh, they rolled very poorly, and so both of them miss. See, now Dagger's going to play with all those ball bearings on the floor. I was going to get the uh, Loxodon to snort them up for me. <laughs> <laughs> Why that's a bad idea and really painful for the Loxodon. Hungry, hungry hippo that could be that. a ranged attack by yeah. uh, sneezing them out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Okay, Varn, your turn. Just imagine oh, I am rolling for a crossbow again at uh, those two have been hit yet, right? No, they haven't. Left or right? Who do you pick? Uh, right. But uh, um, that is a uh, twelve plus five, so that's seventeen. Obviously, hits. Yeah. And the eight five plus three. Uh, that is eight. Eight With, points of damage. Okay, yeah. you take eight points of damage. Problem with storing up uh, metal balls is imagine if uh, you don't stop it in your nose and it goes all the way back to your brain. Well, no, that doesn't. <laughs> it, like it, it, it will go down your throat. Huh? And then, yeah, you, and then you, I gotta then I gotta pee it out. Yeah. <laughs> now that is not Ding. a thing. I don't want. Yeah, yeah, in the in the bedpan, eh? But ding, <laughs> ding. <laughs> I, I feel like that would be ding, like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, like it's not like just it wouldn't be like ding, 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 ding. It would be like rip. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, my turn's over. Have you seen Have you seen a Loxodon's, uh boy? Have you seen my my <laughs> member? <laughs> At least there's gonna be some resistance. Ball bearing, which is gonna shut. <laughs> There'll be some resistance but, in there. But there would be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Is that the one I posted on Discord? I... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some people think I have two trunks. <laughs> hey, whose turn was it? Andros. <laughs> Andros' turn? Yeah, yeah he, he wastes his turn showing everybody his schlong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I swear it's seven inches, but it's actually five. <laughs> All right, well, he's going to do Sacred Flame. Uh, DC 13 Dexterity. Check. At the right one? Uh, or the 
The right one. Okay. Oh, he's safe. Okay. He sh sh flops his ears back and forth in disgust. Okay, hey, Crib, your turn. Okay, I get enraged, get mad, and uh, go two-handed on my longsword. Okay. And attack the guy on the left. On the left? Yeah, in front of me, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, roll for an attack. Well, when can I use my inspiration? <laughs> when you make a roll that you're unhappy with. You want to bump it up a bit. Uh... Well, does 12 hit? Oh, 12 hits. Okay, cool. I'm happy then. Uh, let's do uh, for damage. It barely hits. Uh, I do 8 damage. Okay. <clears throat> he, uh, the rat kind of trips forward and he's stumbling, but he's still up. Now okay. it's uh, Dagger's turn. Finish him. Uh, with the rapier. I get advantage when I'm flanking when I'm a rogue or what? Uh, You get your sneak attack. I missed, so I don't get my sneak attack. Then no. <laughs> and then... Oh, got a... um. 17. Is this the one on the left or the one on the right? One that I've already heard that, that has the the bolt sticking out of it. Okay. You take points of damage. Okay, he goes down. Is that your turn? Yep. Okay. Now it's Orlear's turn. Edmonton Orlear would like to do a firebolt. So he's going to do a ranged attack. Natural one. Oh. Plus six, so that's a seven. <laughs> Doesn't hit. He looks over at Andros and they just shrug at each other. And the, the fireball, it, it misses and it hits the already downed rat and cooks it. <laughs> How's it smell? It smells like burned rat. It's disgusting, but apparently Boots likes it that way. <laughs> nice and cooked. Okay, uh, last rat. Uh, he's going to attack Kriv. Does a 12 hit? No, 13. Does a 13 hit? Crib? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. And up to the top of the order is Varn. Oh. Hey, Varn. Hello. You already know what I'm going to do. Crossbow bolt. 17 plus 5, that's 22. Yeah, that hits. Damage is 3 plus 3, that's... You hit it? 6 damage. 6 damage. That uh, That's enough to finish it. That's the last one? That's the last one. <laughs> now, um, are the proud owners of 6... Large rats. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take number four, who hit me bad, and I'm going to start skinning it up and preparing it for food. I ask me, oh, is this what you were... Huh? Uh, uh, Meepo says, oh, there's more. There's lots more. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to good eats, though. If you I... like that kind of thing. I like it. It's good. I'm going to try to retrieve as many crossbow bolts as I can. How many can I retrieve? I fired four of them. Okay. Um, 
You retrieve. Uh, I'm going to say you retrieve one out of the four. Thank you. Okay, it is a uh, quarter after 10. I'm happy to play all night. I got the day off tomorrow. If you guys want to call it quits, we can call it quits here and you can explore the room beyond uh, in two weeks or you can go forward at least into this next room and see what's there. I'm uh, good for with either way. Yeah, I'm free tomorrow, so I can stay up. Okay. Yeah, we'll go a little bit further. Can we take a... I'm going, I'm going to take a five-minute bathroom break. Just to let you guys know. Wow, it's, it's a big break there. You gotta go. <laughs> um, so, basically, uh, these rooms that the rats came out of, all the doors were open, and so they could just push their way out. Uh, but they all have doors. And uh, the hallway continues forward into the room four that has the statue or the uh, fountain with the dragon statue, similar to the statue you've already encountered. Do you want to go into that room or do you want to investigate these rooms or are you going to go back? What are you going to do? Which way do those uh, doors open? Um, they all open... No. They all open into the hallway. They all swing, uh, I guess, out of the room. Uh, so, the rat- Orler's got, Orler's got one minute. Can he mage hand all of them closed? At uh, thirty foot range. Sure. Yeah, if you want, you can mage hand all the doors closed. Yeah, just in case there's more rats. And I'm going to ask if, uh. uh on this uh, water fountain. Are you... Uh, I can't... You're breaking up. Are you going into the room that I'm has the to... fountain at the end of the hall? Yeah, I'm going to go into the room with the fountain at the end of the hall, but I would also like uh, uh, Boots to come with me. Okay. So, uh, finding thing. Weren't we right outside a room that we were about to go in? Yeah, you were hiding in an alcove. Oh, okay. And the alcove had a door that you had opened just as the battle started. Well, before we go there, should we just take a look in here and see what we see? I know, yeah. Okay, are you going two different directions, or are you... Which we're way just... you have a quick uh, search in this uh, just a, lo- a quick look in the doorway yeah oh okay well which way are you looking quick first the alcove door I'll, I'll join him on the alcove door quickly then okay so you're going to backtrack just a little bit and go into this alcove the door that you've already checked you've already opened you're about to step into the room and the battle started you look into this room and it's empty it's just four walls. It's about a 20 by 20 room. There is a door to the north, but the room itself is empty. Uh, now the water feature. Well, must feature right now. Uh, and that's okay. the north as well? The water feature is north? The water feature is north down the hallway past the six doors where the rats were. Right. Uh, boots? Can you uh, investigate the water uh, feature quickly? The uh, fountain? Sure. Okay, before you get there, you you walk down the hallway. I, I assume you pick up the, all the ball bearings? Yeah. Okay, and then as you pass the six doors, um, and you're going into the room that has this fountain at the end of it, you see right in front of you, right in the floor, there's a trap door that's open. And it's kind of uh, in the way of the, um, like of the entryway here. There's an open trap door, okay. and it's been it's been jammed open with something, and you can see that 
somebody has jammed this trap door open. What have they jammed it open with? Uh, like a piton. Does it look like a well-made piton? Like yep. something an adventurer would use? Oh, yeah. How recent? That's the uh, dusty. What, what's at the bottom of the trap door? It's just the deep pit, about 20 feet deep. There's nothing in it, though? No. And how wide is this pit? Uh, it's about 10 feet by 10 feet. Yeah, I'm going to make a running jump over it. Sure, and you can kind of jump at an angle and take a little less distance and kind of get around it. Yeah, it's it's not in the hallway, it's in the room. So you can get it. You have to jump it, but you can jump at a five foot gap instead of a 10 foot gap. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay, you. Um, you have to make a roll for your strength, or you can just jump your strength. Uh, yeah, I'll just jump my strength, which is 12. Okay, you make it easily. Yeah. Um, don't toss me over. I don't uh, trust my jump. Andros, uh, well, you're going to have to toss him. Could toss him. Do you, do you throw him at dagger? Yeah. Yeah. That's both special. Okay. You both make it over easily. When Andros jumps, he has a 14 strength. Okay, no problem. Orler has a 10 strength. He's going to jump. Yeah, he can make it. Because it's, like I said, you can kind of jump at an angle and make it like a five foot gap, so no problem. As, as you approach the statue, uh, you see another door on your left that heads to the west, and there's another trap door that's been jammed open that's kind of right in front of this. Hello? Yep. It's down. It's the, down it's the same, sort of, same sort of trap door, but this one is like right in front of the door. There's no way that you can get to that door without uh, either jumping the entire trap. Uh, but the door's closed, so you'd have to f you have to figure out a way to get to that door. Orler will mage hand open the door. Okay, the door opens. What does he see? Um, uh, there's nothing, not much you can make. It's a room about. Um, say 30 feet by 20 feet, but there's not much you can see into that room. I mean, you don't see anything, even with- Orler says, I've, I've done my part. Uh, I, I'm not going first though. I'll run and jump to the- Okay, then uh, you have to make a roll for that jump, right? Athletics? Yeah. Uh, a five foot jump? 17. That makes it. Okay, Never you land on the other side of the pit. Yeah. Behind the door, there's like a mother of a big rat that jumps out at you uh, for a surprise attack. Huh? I go rolling past him, right? <laughs> um, He rolls really bad, so he, he's going to miss his surprise attack, and... Um, everyone can roll initiative. Do you want to go through the numbers? Yep. Uh, okay, so 25 to 20. Natural 20 for Orler at, for 22. 22 for Orler? Yep. Okay. What did you... The 20... Who's that? Sure. 20 for Dagger? No. Yeah. Okay. So 20 to 15? Uh, Kriv got an 18. Arn got a 4. 
Andros got a 10. And earlier, oh, he's at he's, uh, top of the round. Yeah, 22, yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, um, Orlear is going to go first. Yep. So is half of us over that pit and half of us isn't? Only Dagger has jumped the pit into the I, next room. I don't want to say that I actually had my mic muted. Yeah. I got a 25 on athletics. You're going to jump the pit. I, I was planning on, I was jumping with him. Okay. Okay, well, you can't jump at the same time, so I'll say that you can jump on this turn on your action. Okay. So he jumped, the rat got the surprise attack instantly, and then we went into an initiative. So Orlear is up. Can we see the rat? Say again? We all see the rat? Um. Yeah, you all see it attack Dagger. You don't see it until it attacks Dagger, but you see it attack Dagger, and it misses. I mean, Perspective-wise, can they can they see the, the rat through the door from the other side of the pit? No. Yeah. No. It, the, you kind of see the rat kind of jump at Dagger and roll over, and then he goes out of view. So you do see him, but only for a moment. You don't see him right now. And this is a much bigger rat. Right. So it's O'Lear's turn? It, it's O'Lear's turn. Yeah. Okay, so O'Lear's going to move to the side to try and get vision on this rat. Okay. Does yeah, I think he can get enough angle this turn to, uh, to peek and see visual. Okay, he's going to cast Magic Missile. Okay. That uh, hits. Uh, hits. That's just uh, 3d4 and plus 1 on each one. Uh, that's 12 points of force damage. Okay. That was a good hit. Yeah, that was a good, yeah. A lot of damage. Okay, uh, that your turn? That, and then he is going to uh, back up to the, the back of the group to make room. And he says, I can see him from this angle. And then he makes room for other people to stand where he stood. Okay. Who's next? Uh, Kriv, you're next. No, Dagger's next. Okay, I'm going to um, put myself... Where, where is the rat in comparison to the pit with me? Is he between the pit and me, or am I between the pit and the rat? And the rat? You are between the rat and the pit right now. Okay. So I'm going to uh, hold my action... So that when he comes at me, I'm going to throw him in the pit using his momentum. Nice. That's good. Okay. Okay, fair enough. And so it, it'll probably be like a grapple check on your turn when he engages you. And then if you succeed with the grapple check, uh, it'll be like a shut, like you'll have to grapple and then shove. So it kind of sounds like two different actions. Well, I'm using his momentum when he charges at me. When he jumps at me, I'm going to just kind of flip on my back and throw him over top of me into the pit. Okay, we'll so, see how it goes. Wouldn't that be like athletics or something? Yeah, it is. Okay, that's fine. You can hold your action. Kriv, your turn. Okay, I'm going to drink a chug of my potion. Okay. For that's, 10 health points. Yeah, that's a bonus action, no problem. You get 10 hit points. 
Oh, that is? Okay. Yeah, if if you're drinking it yourself, it's it's a bonus action. If you feed it to someone else, it's a it's a full action. Okay. Um then I will uh attack the rat. Okay, first you got to make the jump over the pit. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, it's strength athletics. I got a 22. Okay, no problem. You're over the pit. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll attack him. Yeah, I'm going to call that. That's your action. So your bonus action, okay. you drink it, you jump over the pit, you're ready to engage, but he's still on the other side of Dagger. Okay, cool. And how how wide is the the room? The room's about uh, 30 by 20. Okay. So I want to make sure like I jump beside him so that I don't impede his grapple throw. You're, you you're pretty much blocking the door now. You jumped over the door. I mean, you jumped over the pit, but you're in between and that pit. Keep your legs apart so we can shoot in between them. You're, you're, you're parting the sea? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I'm just asking him to part his legs so when it's... Uh, uh, other people's turn and shoot in between them at rat. Can I, uh, as a free action, get on my old fours and just like kind of like act like a bench so he trips over me? Uh, yeah, you can go prone, but you're yeah. if you go prone, then you're more, uh, you will take attacks at advantage, like it, people will have advantage at attack, melee attacks. I am you praying for you, boots. I'm going to go prone. Okay. You I, drop prone. Like a, a slide, you know? Uh, now it is the rat's turn. The rat is going to run forward to attack Boots. <laughs> Am I... Uh, does the rat get an attack before your reaction? No, previous you said that reaction went first. Reaction happens first? Oh, not necessarily. I think at the same time. Yeah, I think they st he's still got to get his attack in, and then it triggers. Yeah. So oh, I got a 14 on my athletics, so he has to contest that. Well, he, first, if his, if his attack happens first... Yeah, yeah. So he's a 17 to hit. And that hits. Okay. Okay, so... They, he does nine damage. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, shoot. Your wound is changed, so... When... I got one. That changes, what, that changes what I was going to do. Yeah, one hit point left. I made that athletics check of 14 to throw him into the pit. Okay. So he has to roll his against you. Yeah, he fails. Oh. Yes! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> Come over here. I'll kill you. He fails the athletics check. Um, and trips over me. Trips over, yeah, trips over the prone guy. I'm going to give him a roll, see if he falls in the pit. He, he somehow he gets stuck up on uh, on Kriv and he doesn't fall into the pit. Oh no! What? <laughs> See if he falls into the pit. Yeah, that's a good thing. I, I think. Uh, well, you know, I give Kriv's on his uh, on his belly, like he's prone. So yeah, he's not. He doesn't have to roll for falling because he didn't get knocked into the pit. He's good. I won't even make him roll. Yeah, I'm We're pretty gonna sturdy. On Andros's turn. Kriv, you just got in the way. <laughs> All I right, was I'm gonna do. Try to trip him. 
I'm going to do uh, pull out a little bit of uh, catnip and cast Cure Wounds on on uh, Wakanda Boy. You have to... That's a touch is spell. That a touch spell. Oh, that is a touch. Shit, I can't do it. Can you toss me over? Because I have Cure Wounds too. And I probably weigh less than I can also cure him too. Okay. Uh, okay. Then what I'm going to do is cast Bane on this rat. Okay. What's Bane do? Uh, so I can do up to three creatures. but uh, So they must make a charisma saving throw. Uh, that would be a DC 13. Uh, so if it fails, whenever a target uh, fails, it it uh, subtracts a d4 from a saving throw or attack. Is so, it a blast? Yeah, it's like a bane. It basically opposite of bless. It subtracts a d4 from uh, saving throws and attacks. So this is cast on the rat. Mm. Okay, so I, I got it. I get to make a saving throw. A charisma saving throw. Throw to me. Thirteen. Yeah, he fails. So now every time he makes an attack or a saving throw, he has to subtract a D four. Okay. It'll be a little harder to hit you now. It'll be a little harder for him to hit anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, concentration. Yeah, the concentration up to one minute. Okay. Okay, that's your turn. Yep. Now, uh, Varn. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Andros is going to get close to the pit so that he stays within the 30 foot range. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, oh. Varn. Varn, you gonna try to get a clear shot at the uh, rat, and he's going to fire a crossbow bolt, and that is a six plus five. That's uh, no, uh, yeah, five. So that's eleven. Does that hit? No. Okay. Varn, sits down and hopes. That's it. Okay, or Lear, you're up. Orlear is going to cast his last second level spell, Magic Missile, at this bastard. So, it's an auto hit. Uh, for 11 points of force damage. 11 points. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, it's still up. Finish him. Turn is it? Dagger. Dagger, you're up. That's my turn. Yep. So you are now. Uh, the rat is in between. You and Krev, and Krev is lying down in at the threshold of the door. Right. Push him again. Um, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yeah, the push, the push, you know, that would be a, a trip. Like, you would push him over the guy into the pit. This or is Berta. Yeah. Would he get advantage if uh, Kriv was assisting? If, if Kriv assists? Well, I get an help. advantage for flanking. or What's an advantage? It's a plus one, remember? Uh, uh, yeah, you get a plus one for flanking. But you get sneak attack for an ally. Do you want to attack or do you want to shove? I'm attacking. Okay. I miss with my rapier. Okay. Did you get sneak attack? Uh, I don't think you get sneak attack if your car- your ally's prone, though. You don't get it if he's incapacitated. 
Uh, it doesn't matter. I can't sneak attack with my claws, and that's the only thing I hit with. Okay. So, no. So, I got a 14 to hit. Does that hit? Yes. Thank God. I do two points of damage. Woohoo! <laughs> you never know. Might kill him. Never know. No, he's still up. No. Oh. Oh, someone save me. I'm almost dead. Someone's going to be dead. we will be outright dead. Hopefully, probably, maybe. Who's next? You are, right? Yeah. Crib. No? Crib's up. Crib. So, half moving to stand up. Yep. Try to pull, uh, uh, pull him down. And just smash this thing. Yeah, I stand up in two-handed attack. Okay. Sorry, just hold on. Oof. I got a, I got a one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, well, I got a natural one, but uh, with my multipliers, it's a six. Right, but a natural one is still a natural one, so modifiers are nothing. It's it's, it's a, a miss. miss. It's a crit miss. Yep. Merry crit miss. Oh my god. I think it's the rat's turn. Yeah. Well, we're dead. <laughs> In this story, the cat is eaten by the rat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, the rat the rat's gonna attack Kriv. That's Just you. swung at him. Because you're uh, sword two-handed, you don't have the plus two from your shield. That's right. That is true. So that's a 14 to hit. And it takes your body and it just drives you out into the shadows. Uh, making sure my shield's so off. 14? Two. No, that does not hit. Okay. Uh, Andro, Andros, you're next. Andros is going to leap the gap. Oh, okay. oh buddy! Your strength athletics. Uh, my athletics is a uh, 14. Total 14? Yeah. Okay, you leap the gap. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my maul and I'm going to swing at this dude. Okay, since, uh, um, Get him. Yep, you can you can make the swing. I'll let you uh, attack. He's right there in front of uh, in front of you. Okay. Roll for attack. Uh, that's a 14. 14 hits. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage. You swing down this great hammer, and it cracks into his skull, and the skull hits the concrete or the pavement, the it splatters, and you see, like, pustules and, like, green ooze and, like, just stench coming off of this. Uh, it's an ugly mess. I'm not eating that. I, lo I look. I look down to uh, to boots, and I say, "This one's my dinner." <laughs> and it, <laughs> and the, the corpse is bubbling. Bubbling. <laughs> it doesn't oh. look like you took this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have it. <laughs> Anybody? Could you? Uh, somebody possibly? Uh, if that was a big you, ass room, if, if this room, can we search the room first? Like, is it empty? Can you heal me first? <laughs> yeah, let's heal. Yeah. Well, I'm down to two hit points. I'm gonna need to heal too. All right. You should keep on to your stuff because you can heal better than I. So I'll just heal him. Plus, I'm not using my spell slots that often. Yeah, I've got two spell slots, so I could cast two cure wounds. How are you getting over here? 
I like, already you jumped me over. Uh, I'm already over there. Orlear and Varn are the only two on the on the fountain side of the pit. I'm across. Orlear is not a strong dude. I'm just stating that um, I don't use my spell slots at all. That often I'll jump all. back across the pit. Are you sure if you like fall, you're? I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I... jump across too. Who's first? Boy, wait, we should heal first. Uh, I got a 12. Okay. A make it? Yeah, 12 makes it. Okay. And I'll cast Cure Wounds on him. Plus, uh... Why don't... Uh, so that's... Uh, that is 5 oh, HP back to you, and I'll cast it again, because I'm not using my spell slots at all. And that is 2... Plus four, so that's six. So you get 11 HP back. Wow, well, that's more than I have, so... I rolled a Cure Wounds, and I rolled a one on my 1d8. Oof. Hey, you had your so car. I did. Yeah, so I got four. Okay, I'm gonna... Thanks, I'm gonna cast it again. I'm gonna cast it again. <laughs> or are we gonna... Let's check out that room. Like, it would be a great room to defend, because there's a pit in front of it, if rats are around. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. Close the door. Nash, it'd be a great room? short rest area. If if it's yeah. in nest, we're obviously gone. But... Oh, yeah, what? but we should check out the room. I think it's a defendable room. I'll throw you across. Okay. And uh... actually, who's going to stay with me, Bo? What's at the bottom of the pit? There, it's just twenty feet deep. It's empty. Twenty feet deep. Yeah. Um, oh, ways down. Okay. Um, so I'll throw uh, uh, the right. cobalt and uh, go across. No, catch him. Roll for that or no? Uh, you're throwing who across? Beepo and and Varn. Um, yeah, you can roll. Uh, would be the strength. I'm on the other side trying to catch him. Yeah. Yeah, I can be there too. A 15. Okay, that pass succeeds. And a 16. Yeah, succeeds. And I'll jump. Uh, eight. Andres, you got to catch him. I'm uh, reaching out with my trunk. Yeah. So roll dexterity. Yay, yay. Uh, is this acrobatics or what? Yeah. Or just a day? Okay. Uh, that's a 10. You catch him. Now I'll roll strength to pull him up. All right. That's better. Nope. That's a natural one. Oh, and I, I come out and grab him and <laughs> try to hold him up. Okay, so... Uh, Dagger is pulling Andros into the pit with him. And uh, Kriv <laughs> grabs the Loxodon's tail. <laughs> yep. we got, we got a whole... It's not my tail! It's a chain! <laughs> yeah, they we're back the to the human up. centipede. Roll we're back, back to the check. human centipede. You, again. Uh, you can do this. Kriv, roll your strength check. You're, you're yeah. playing a few people here. I hit eight. Uh, I rolled for eighteen. Eighteen does it. Yeah. <laughs> My tail feels a little stretched. Yeah, it was a higher DC uh, to to make that, and you made it. Uh, Andros, yeah, your tail is twice as long now. <laughs> I was pat him on the shoulder and say, "I'm sorry, man, but it was necessary." It wasn't. It was necessary. <laughs> oh. I must have slipped. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't imagine that being pulled that hard. <laughs> it's longer now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's coming off. <laughs> well, can we check the room now? Yeah. Okay, which room? The the uh well, we jump back into the room where the pit in front of the pit. <laughs> well, there was a door attached to it, right? You're in the diseased rat room. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. With a fountain. No, the fountain's on one side of the pit. The rat room's on the other side of the pit. Okay. Yeah. And it was diseased? Over to the rat side. Yeah, that's what all that pus was. Oh. I would not eat that if I were you. No, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can we check the room? There's nothing else. Okay, roll. Whoever is checking out this room, roll investigation. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it. I wanted to check it. Yes. Can I smell check? Yep, you can smell check. <laughs> I rolled two fives. Varn, say that again. Uh, I got a six. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I rolled a five. I got an eleven. <laughs> you got an eleven? Oh, Orlear, Orlear's gonna roll. Doesn't even. Yeah, yeah. how did Orlear get over the. Orlear, Orlear rolled a four. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness, guys. <laughs> We're the sub- There's a plus five Vorpal sword in here somewhere, but we didn't find it. How does Orlear get over the pit? Uh, he jumps. I don't remember him making a roll for that. Oh, well, he said he had a. I said he had a ten strength of ten. I yeah. thought you said that's fine. Oh. You can you can jump your strength, can't you? Yeah, you can jump. That's the distance you can do. Yeah, I wanted him at least to roll to see if he could make it. Oh, okay, like I'll sit on the edge and just like extend my arm. Helping him across. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, athletics. Yeah, athletics. Right. Uh, That's an eleven. Okay, he makes it. Cool. Now he investigated for a four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everyone who investigates under ten, you find rat rusted metal bits and filth. Sweep okay. all. That. Crap into the pit. Yeah. <laughs> We've hit the mother load there, friends. I rolled an 11. Okay, 11. 11, it, before you push all the little... All the, all the things that everyone else discarded, you find um, two silver pieces, a gold yeah. piece, and one gem worth five gold pieces. Ooh. Just in the mind gonna... the rat's nest. I am... What am I gonna do here? Do that. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, I'm just looking something up here. Uh, I'm going to use my second spell slot for detect magic and cast it in the room. Is there any other entrances to this room? No. No, this is a, a, a room. It's got four walls. It's 20 by 30. It's got this rat's nest, and you kind of searched through it and found a few things. The hell did but that... There's only that one door coming in here, and it's got the pit on the other side. I just cast detect magic. Okay, there's no other magical things in this room. Shit. Should, should we do a short yeah. rest? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'll say like how how um big of a radius is your detect magic? Uh it's thirty feet. Uh it's this but it doesn't really it doesn't say radius or diameter in the T and D. I just have to look this up. You look around and you can see the of the magic on items. Oh, thirty feet within me, so a thirty foot radius around me. Okay. So uh, it's a concentration up to ten minutes. I'd walk the room. Sure, you walk the entire room. Yeah. There's I'd... nothing in this room that's magical. But you catch a glimpse of something in the previous room as you walk past the door on the other side of the pit where the fountain is. You catch a glimpse of a faint aura on that in that room. Oh, what color aura though? That matters. Uh, 
It's undetectable. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over and then go look at it. You gonna jump back again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just playing hopscotch. Make another <laughs> roll. You guys, like, you built a red already. <laughs> oh, how many times have you jumped this pit? Okay, well, I got a plus. Uh, let's see, I got a 17. Okay, you jump back. <laughs> you jump back to the room with the fountain. And I want to, with my, probably still have 10 minutes or 5 minutes left of this. Okay. I'm going to follow it the fountain itself emits a faint aura of evocation so i don't know what evocation. color that is but evocation yeah yeah i can learn the school of magic but uh okay i i tell the other guys that okay That's why it said and... fire yeah bring the fire uh that and is this that was the other fountain. This is a one that's similar. Do they have writing on it? Make a perception check. He does, and it's uh, that is a sixteen. So we'll see if I want to be noble. Okay, a sixteen. You can see there's an inscription in Draconic on oh, the front of the, of the of the basin. Kriv, there's a. Uh... This looks like the writing from the other fountain, but I can't read it. I jump over the the pit. Make a roll. <laughs> Is it a strength or what? The strength yeah. athletics. athletics. We should just like lower that p p trap door or something. <laughs> Jam it <laughs> shut. Um, I I get eleven on athletics. Okay, you just barely make it. <laughs> but you catch yourself. Okay. And I read the fountain. Okay, it's it says in, Dracon in Draconic, it says, let there be death. Oh, I don't like that one. Let what? there be fire, let there be death. The uh, giant rat's corpse and kill it over there. Yeah, let's put oh. the rat's, de uh, rat's corpse in the fountain. Yeah. <laughs> the corpse is on the other side of the pit. <laughs> Who wants to chuck it over? Yeah, well, I'll walk down the hall and grab one of those other rats. It's, we swept it into the pit already. Oh, yes, it's in the pit. Yeah, I'll go walk back and get one of those rats and come back here. Okay, one of the six rats that's lying in the hallway. Yeah. Throw it in, throw it in the fountain. Okay. You pick yeah. it up, you drag it over there, you throw it in the fountain. There's yeah. a dead rat in the fountain. Yeah. <laughs> Eat blood. Oh, you know, like. Let it open and your blood everywhere. And if not, we can always sacrifice one of our uh, one of us. <laughs> oh, dear. See, now you're com now you're comfortable. Um, I'm take a short or a long rest here. Or... Yeah. How long has it been? A lot since Do you want it? How long has it been uh, that you've been traveling in the cave? Oh, it's probably been uh, a good six hours in the caves. So it's probably, you know, close to nine or ten o'clock. At night. Yeah. I think we should take a long rest in this in this room here, over here. Yeah. Um, you said well, there was pitons holding the trap door open? Is there a way we could pull that piton out and walk across and then or, or jam it so it doesn't flop down and then jam it when it's down so that nothing can come in at us? Just leave it armed? We don't have to roll a check every time we jump over. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, that would be helpful. You could use your uh, you could use your thieves tools to try and jam so that it doesn't open. Right now, it's jammed in the open. Yeah, I want to jam it so it doesn't open. We can always Is shut the door. Foot open? door. Jam the door. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it a 10-foot opening? Yeah, it's 10 feet by 10 feet. And I got a... Uh, well, guidance. <laughs> he already made his roll. <sighs> 
You're on the other side of the pit. Oh, you don't get time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm on the other side. It doesn't matter. I roll pretty good. Uh, 15 plus four. So 15 plus eight. Ooh, 15 plus so eight, 23. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you managed to jam it in the closed position. Yeah. Who's going to walk over it first? People. No, we have throw, to do it. Throw him a rope. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw him a rope. We can throw Hang Meepo. On. He's light as shit. And I'm not Meepo. I'm Varn. You don't, don't be racist. We have names. <laughs> well, we can throw either of you guys over. Yeah, yeah. I'll throw the rope to whoever's going to walk over and hang on to it. Yep, yeah, I'm probably too uh, like I'm 31 pounds. I I weigh nothing. Probably someone heavier would be a good, a better idea. Well, how about all of you hang on to the rope and I'll walk on it. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I'm going, to be jumping, I'm going to be jumping over this, even though it's closed. Everyone's just, why are you always jumping over? Because uh, I don't trust my weight over that thing. A little piton's going to hold 400 pounds. That's true. Well, it ho holds the roof so, that holds you when you're climbing, so probably... I grab Vern and Meepo and chuck them over. Okay. There's two on the other side. The only ones over there were you. You two. Or yeah, I I'm get... over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's long rest? Long rest. Because it is... Yeah. I jump over into the room. I'm not walking on it. Okay, make a check. Guidance on myself. <laughs> Halfway through the job. Oh, that's probably good that I did. Uh, seven. With guidance. <laughs> okay, with a seven, you make the jump, and you miss completely, and you fall onto the trap door, and it holds. <laughs> and I just casually Word. walk in. I slowly clap. I just say, you lucky bastard. I wanted to test it for you guys. If it can hold me, it can hold all of you. <laughs> okay, and then we all walk Jumping. over. Jumping right on it. Okay, so you've you've set the trap so it's locked in its closed position. Yeah. Okay. So Do we want to set the trap, though, now that we're all in here? Yeah, and we walk across it, and once we're all in there, we set it back to be armed. Okay, then you uh, got to do that. Um, roll again. Roll again. Roll again. Game? Reset the trap. Puss in boots. Go for it. Oh, even higher. Uh, okay, you successfully boots. set this trap. Boots. So now it's. It's in the up position, but it's triggered so it'll go off. It's not stuck. Sweet. Long rest? Yeah. Yeah. Long rest. Make a fire and chill out. Make some rats. Yeah. Yeah. Make some rats. Okay. Um, that so it sounds like a good place to stop. It's 11. Yeah. You guys uh, can get a long rest in here. And, uh, you know, I'll have you. Um, well, yeah, I'll have you roll uh, next week. Uh, see if there's any encounters through the night, but uh, you can have a long rest in here. XP. How about experience? Yeah, I'll have to count up the experience of all the all the people you encountered, and all. Uh, I'm going to give the inspiration to Va this week. Okay. Uh, for, for his interactions with Meepo, and um, you know, sticking his neck out there, and. <coughs> And uh, being a cobalt. So, Varn, you get a, a D6 that you can use any time in the future. It doesn't uh, doesn't expire. But you can't get any more inspiration until you use this one. Okay. Thank you. 
Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, Ooh. good job. Thank Is you. Thanks for listening to Perilous Pursuits. Be sure to check out our website at perilouspursuits.com for new episodes, news, and other information. If you'd like to help us out, click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, you could give our podcast some stars and reviews on iTunes. We would really appreciate it. In the meantime, go take your Displacer Beast for a walk, give your mummy a big hug, and go play some D&D.